Speakers also said they were unaware of the program, so Shaw can expect to be questioned about whether the administration kept lawmakers in the loop about what it was doing. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. A key Republican lawmaker says a former IRS official may have committed crimes as part of the agency's Tea Party tax status controversy. Correspondent Mike Gracia has more. House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Dave Camp has set a vote for Wednesday on whether to refer former IRS head Lois Lerner to the Justice Department for possible criminal prosecution. For over a year, Camp's committee has been investigating the IRS for its targeting the tax-exempt status of Tea Party and other conservative groups from 2010 to 2012. In a report last year, the IRS Inspector General said tax-exempt applications were set aside by the agency during the period in question simply because of words such as Tea Party Party or Patriots. An attorney for Lerner says she broke no laws. Mike Gracia, Washington. Microsoft is ending support for Windows XP beginning today, but what does that mean for the program's users? Correspondent Shelley Adler has the answer. If you are using Windows XP, computers will continue to work as they have before April 8th, except at that point, user security is essentially entirely in their own hands. Security consultant Patrick Thomas, who works for the firm Neohapsis. Users and organizations that are still on XP really, really should be making plans to find some new options. Thomas adds XP has been so reliable, a wide variety of people and businesses have stuck with it instead of upgrading to other Windows systems. I'm Shelly Adler. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. We've made significant progress wiring the nation's schools for the Internet, but we have to do more. Every child in America should have an Internet-capable computer in their bedroom at home, preferably with a high-resolution webcam. I have been to children's chat rooms and have been shocked and disappointed to find they are frequently empty. Even when these youngsters do manage to find their way online, they lack the skills to do something as simple as pinpoint their location on Google Maps. I long for the day when someone can log onto the Nickelodeon under 13 chat room and type, hey, any kids in here like to play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? I have a Nintendo at my house. And be overwhelmed with instant messages. Then I'll know we're doing our job supporting technology in this country. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out in that way if you prefer. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com and create the content on the site that which you see on the front page was created by listeners just like you. Uh, you can submit the content. You find something online that you think is interesting or outrageous or exciting or fun or whatever. Whatever you think our other listeners will enjoy, submit it there at freetalklive.com. You do need a Reddit account. You tie that in with your Free Talk Live account. They're both free, and it only takes a moment. And you'll be able to, at that point, contribute right there to freetalklive.com. So thank you in advance for that. Uh, get interactive with us. Also on the phones at 855-450-FREE. Ian, I was just going to say, I remember yes. Julia saying that she didn't like the community on Reddit, and I have to disagree with her really? 100%. Why? Well, I just I just think they're a bunch of cool dudes. You mean in general on yeah. Reddit? In general. It seems... It's a big site. It would seem to be very difficult to make a general statement about the people on Reddit, because it seems to me like there are a lot of them. I mean, this is one of the most popular websites in the entire world. That is certainly true. However, uh, well, I would like to say, first of all, that I pretty much just read the Bitcoin subreddit mm -hmm. and sometimes the Bitcoin markets subreddit, and sometimes I'll go to the Reddit front page. But having said that, I feel like I get a, um, a particular sense of style 
going to throughout Reddit, and I like it. Okay, so Bitcoin and the front page, that leaves a whole lot of Reddit that's untouched by you, Johnny Ray. Now, I have no opinion on what the people on, on Reddit are like. I mean, I've had some experiences there, but I, you know, I can't really say one thing or another. I mean, I've been in the anarcho-capitalist group to do an Ask Me Anything, and obviously those guys are pretty friendly, mm-hmm. most of them. It- uh, but uh, you know, I've also been in the, in the Silk Road group, and... Uh, let's see what else. Where, what else have I done on there? Um, I'm spacing out on any other ones that I've, I've been to, but well, it seems like you're more likely to go to things that you're attracted to on Reddit. Oh, I know. I've seen uh, the Derek J video where we get pulled over. Derek, myself, Ademo, and I think Kate from CopBlock.org. We get pulled over by a Manchester police officer, and uh, the cop comes up and actually pops Derek's door open during the pullover and is. You know, not so nice. Um, and, and, of course, we are pretty snippy uh, back to him, uh, trying to stand up for our rights and all. And people did not like that video on Reddit. They did not like it one bit. And actually, it getting published on Reddit ended up getting that particular video hundreds of thousands of views because mm. it went viral as a result of it getting boosted up on Reddit. So I don't really care what the people on Reddit think, so long as they're watching my video. Uh, but, you know, the, the super majority of the posters responding to that particular post, and that was in some sort of, you know, generic-sounding subreddit-like video or something like that. So it was more uh, less niche of a kind of a sounding group than, say, a Bitcoin group or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So Reddit hates Ian. Maybe that's why I like it so well, much. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I want to ask you, Ian. Is this, uh, you know, in in a situation like that, you've got, I, I mean, what are you trying to achieve? So if a video, um, you know, you you standing up for your rights against a police officer, yeah, um, and people hate it, right? Yeah. Like the super majority of of a of people hate the video and hate the activism. If you're not trying to change hearts and minds, that's what I'm trying to do here on Free Talk Live. I'm trying to convince people that the ideas of liberty are superior to the mm-hmm. ideas of, I don't know, um, intolerance, violence, um, you know, whatever it is that, that we might describe, uh, you know, ideas that are in contrast to the ideas of liberty. It, for me, I'm trying to convince them that they're the right idea. Now, some days I'm better than others, and some ways I'm better than others. These things are certainly true, but... I, I mean, ultimately, that's my goal. Obviously, you've stated in the past that you're going to convince some people and some people are going to be polarized. That's a that's a, a matter of fact, sure. Yep. Wouldn't Isn't your goal to polarize the least amount and convince the most amount? And if no. so, why wouldn't why don't you change your tactics? Uh, the goal in my case, or in the case of this police video and those that are similar to it, like the infamous crossing guard video, which we can talk about in a moment— but the goal in my case is to publicize and to inspire. Um, we, th- there's, that's the, I guess those are kind of secondary and tertiary goals. The primary goal is to stand up for your rights and document it. Uh, so that's what Derek J. and I uh, have been pretty good at doing and usually are very good at doing together. And so we stand up for our rights, we document it, and we th- then release that documentation. We then release the video to the world, and the world decides, the individuals decide you know, whether they like that or not. But ultimately, it doesn't matter to me the popularity of something. What matters to me is, were we coming from a perspective of principle? Were we being as peaceful as we possibly could in that situation? And were people inspired by what we did to stand up for their own rights? Because if people aren't going to be able to duplicate the things that the activists here in New Hampshire are doing as part of the Free State Project, if people aren't willing to step up and stand up for their own rights, then we're all screwed. So what you're you're saying is is that you do want to change hearts and minds and convince people, um, but you just want to convince. For you, there's a larger amount of people you're sort of willing to you know waste their um, you know their their con- you know you're you're willing to polarize a much larger group in order to get that smaller group whose support would be much deeper. Is that what you're saying? In theory, because sure. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who say, "Yeah, that's a good idea," and then they go on clicking down there, mm-hmm. um, down the way. I mean, I, you know, I can re- do some inspirational video on liberty, and whatever that inspirational video is, is unlikely to get anybody to do anything. Yeah, I think that if you second guess yourself in this game, you will second guess yourself into paral- paralysis, where you will constantly be wondering in advance of doing something whether or not this will be popular enough to warrant doing it. In which case, you may be. Uh, you may choose to not do something at all. 
And I think that's unfortunate because if you don't follow your inspiration, if you don't follow your principles, then you aren't being true to yourself. That's how I would feel. I would not want to be not true to myself. So let's go to the uh, the most infamous. The Actually, these are two pretty infamous incidents. The one with a cop popping the door open and then the uh, the one very infamous one that appears in Derek J's victimless crime spree where uh, there's a crossing guard who Derek J says hello to one afternoon and she flips out comes at him now he is, and, says hello with a camera rolling on her that's right yeah. i just want to be clear people right. want to know that's what, why there's a video uh, of this God. so he says hello to her and she comes at him crossing at least six feet of distance to get up in his face and then of course accuse him of getting into her face as she attacks get him, out of my face <laughs> as she attacks him with i don't think she uses those exact words but that's very common amongst people who feel victimized by a video camera uh, she then attacks him with her stop sign. And that video, I think, only has like 44 likes and over a 1,500 dislikes on YouTube. So the like-dislike ratio is very, very high. High. Yeah. There are a lot of people who think that we are just monsters uh, for engaging in this behavior. Because then uh, we begin to hold this woman accountable for what she did. So we don't let her just get away with hitting her. Now, he, she gets away with it in that he doesn't strike her. He doesn't return the aggression against her, but we do say things like, hey, lady, you can't do that. Uh, <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. You can't just that's, do hitting people with signs. That's assault. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, the people who uh, who oppose that particular video and the, the tactics they're in, they won't come right out and say this, but it seems to be that their position is that, well— She's old, so she should be able to do what she does. I think and that's what the position is, of folks, on this one. I think it's an amusing situation how we can, uh, you know, we, we just give passes to people. Uh, apparently, if you're a school crossing guard and you're old enough, you can just smack people with signs. Um, you know, this is one of those handheld stop signs. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just smack a, a gay kid with a camera with it. Um, I think it's interesting. And I do think that handheld cameras are more upsetting to people than... Mm -hmm. Like cameras that aren't handheld. Like a professional kind of looking camera, you mean? No, I, what I mean or is... Or like um, a mounted uh, security camera. Right. It's like, like if there was a mm -hmm. security camera up on a pole and we got that video, then it might have been an entirely different situation. But then again, she wouldn't have hit him if he didn't have a camera in his hand. So we can come back and talk more about uh, you know, tactics of activism. And actually, in point of fact, uh, I guess sort of related to this, there's an article by Chris Cantwell, Mark, that you have. Uh, which has to do with uh, 10 reasons why libertarians aren't nice to you or something like that. That's we'll get, right. We'll get into that I think because I think that ties in here. Uh, 855, 450 free. How much should people ruminate before they do? Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw of free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. 
He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Right here, you may take control of the airwaves. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com and join us via Skype on the air here at lrn.fm. That's the username you can add to your contacts list. You do have to do that little step before you're able to call in with Skype, but it's pretty easy to do that. So again, username lrn.fm, toll-free number 855-450-FREE. We're talking about activism to kind of start the show out with tonight. We'll get into the uh, 10 reasons why libertarians aren't nice to you, according to Chris Cantwell who is an expert at not being nice. So we'll get into that. But uh, f first, we kind of got off into this side uh, subject of, of activism and kind of different approaches to it and and should you really second-guess yourself a whole lot and, and not do certain things that could be perceived of as unpopular? Is the popularity a uh, or the potential popularity of an action a big factor in uh, one's decision to take that action as an activist? To me, it's not, but there are a lot of people to whom it is. And uh, the Free State Project contains all of those people. Uh, the Free State Project contains people who are like me, like uh, me and Derek J, who just you know want to act on principle, do what we feel is right, and promote that to attract people who are like us. Uh, there are also people who are within the Free State Project that do not want to be known as free staters. They want to do their activism without having that label and whatever baggage, good or bad, might be attached to that label. Within Those people are also within the Free State Project. So I would say that's kind of the range that we're looking at here, all the way from people who don't want to be seen or heard as you know activists necessarily or free staters, all the way to people who don't mind it, you know, wearing it on their sleeve to some extent and, and doing things that are controversial. The Free State Project, the thing that binds us all together is we all believe in liberty. Now, we don't necessarily all agree on what the best route is to go about achieving that, and that's fine. In fact, I'm glad that we have such a diversity in this movement of over 15,000 people now, over 15,500 actually, who have signed up with the Free State Project. The three of us in the studio, we've all done that. We've all completed the move to New Hampshire. And the idea behind the Free State Project is to move liberty-minded people to the same physical location and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Now, activism can mean different things to different people. Activism could mean going out there and doing civil disobedience, being arrested. It could mean running for political office. It could mean staying behind the scenes and writing letters to the editor. 
there's a, l a large range of activism as well, which is also good. So again, this diversity is important. And the Free State Project has not only the diversity of tactics, but also the numbers. The other rest of the libertarian movement, mostly a bunch of thinkers and talkers rather than doers. We're looking for the doers to come join us. Go to Free State Project. I'm, I'm for the thinkers and talkers too, but the doers yeah. are more likely to move. Doers are more likely to move, and really, I'd rather have an activist. I'd rather have one activist versus somebody who's just going to complain personally. So, uh, freestateproject.org, go check that out, and make sure you don't miss the uh, Porcupine Freedom Festival. If you have the, uh, you know, if you got a little bit of free time in the late month of June, you will want to be at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. It's June 29th. Excuse me, June 22nd through the 29th in Northern New Hampshire, and it's That's a right. great opportunity to check out New Hampshire and to, most importantly, connect with the community of activists that are here. Because that's the real attraction. Um, you know, maybe you've heard things about the activism that goes on here in New Hampshire. Maybe you've heard things about the community that exists here of liberty-minded people. There's no amount of words that can really describe what it's like to experience it. So I recommend you check that out at Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. So we're talking about uh, activist tactics, and Mark was uh, Mark and I were kind of going back and forth, Johnny Ray, and, and you're an old school uh, Keniac. You've been here a long time. You led the old school panel at uh, Keenvention last year. Uh -huh. So I'd say you're qualified as anyone else, uh, more so than many others, to I comment did. on the tactics of uh, what do you feel is is the right way to kind of approach things is there a, you know is overthinking things a bad thing can it can it paralyze lead to inaction one of the great things about being a libertarian is if you stay consistent with your own principles then you can then any anything you do is okay with Johnny Ray um and as far as, as long as it's nonviolent right? yeah it, as long as you're not violating anyone else's rights then then you know you can you can do what you want and Regarding the the persuasive power of what you're doing, um, I think that majorities aren't that important. Majorities, for good or ill, do nothing. Only minorities do. That's what you want. You like you were saying before. You want the doers. And I think most of the the active people are going to have strong feelings about their libertarianism and they're going to see through what they what other people might say is childish behavior mm -hmm. and they'll see that well there's a guy who's actually gonna he's gonna say boo about something he's not just gonna sit back and let everything happen you're gonna you're gonna push back a little bit and that's something that that most people don't do so so i'm fine with it i, I it can make people uncomfortable to watch something like that. Yeah. Well, and regarding... regarding, I, I agree somewhat with what you're saying, uh, Johnny Ray. So the minor minorities are certainly powerful. A a dedicated minority setting you know, brush fires in people's minds um, is incredibly powerful. However, a, um, you know, a miffed majority is also pretty powerful. W one thing's uh, very interesting. One of the, some of the first gun laws out there were like 1968. Um, they disallowed felons from possessing firearms and that's because the majority of the people would be like hmm yeah felons shouldn't have firearms now they don't feel particularly strongly about it in that they'd you know be willing to do anything about it or protest or uh, you know write letters to the editor or anything like that but politicians and you know law enforcement agencies and and gun grabbers found this is an easy way to go after a certain segment of the population having guns mm -hmm. uh, you know maybe they exploited a story that happened ex-felon shoots girlfriend or whatever the story is yeah exploit that and they're able to get what they want and they so they're, they're able to leverage majorities and majorities are doesn't isn't that, isn't that an example of a majority doing nothing than a majority doing something they do something in that they empower a politician or group of politicians to do whatever they do and what i'm saying in this instance ian uh, we're talking specifically about a situation where ian was uh videotaping a police officer and there are people you mean the, the crossing guard that was actually the story before that, weren't we, oh. on Reddit? Oh, right. Okay, that at, one. At a traffic stop? Sure. And 
you know, I mean, they're and it, talking back to him as well. Right. There wouldn't it wouldn't be too difficult to get a politician to say you mayn't videotape a police officer at a stop. Right. Like maybe the police union say this is a really great idea. Let's pass this they law. Sure would. Let's make it the death penalty to videotape a police officer at a traffic stop, and um, and and to hold them accountable for opening doors, uh, you know, that they shouldn't be opening, and and all kinds of things. I mean, this police officer in this video was dead asked wrong and these mouth breathers on reddit just went ahead and said oh you shouldn't have made the police officer mad well they would argue that uh, the police officer wasn't wrong that uh whatever they i think it was an inspection sticker was the reason that Derek j was pulled over that he was doing his job and he was uh, a gentleman about it he was not he's not supposed to open the door of your car Keep your hands off of other people's property, I tend officer. Agree. I tend to agree with you, but the people on that video sure don't. Right. They're just wrong. 855, just and there's They're... a super majority of them on that, that comment that are absolutely wrong. I, I agree, agree with, you. with you. So uh, 855, 450 free. So, you know, if it's a majority that are opposed to what you're doing, should you second guess yourself and not put that video out? More coming up. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step -step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. That's 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Have you ever wanted to help a hard-working person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. 
the monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to connect in that way. If you have an opinion at the moment, we're discussing the issue of activism and certain approaches, uh, tactics, some more controversial than others. You're welcome to jump into the discussion, 855-450-FREE. And if you value your online privacy, you really need to know about ProXPN. What is it? It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that everything you're doing online is encrypted prior to reaching your internet service provider, which basically makes your ISP or your internet service provider, makes them essentially just a pass-through. They're just passing your encrypted data through to the ProXPN servers where it's then unencrypted and sent out to the rest of the internet. This prevents your ISP from spying on you, which many of them are doing right now. Every website you're visiting, every search term you're entering is likely being logged by your internet service provider. You can stop that by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Go there now, download the software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Plus, there's instructions for Linux users. You just have to email them to get those instructions to get that working. Uh, But whatever operating system you have, you can use ProXPN. You can protect yourself. ProXPN does not log your internet browsing habits like your ISP likely does. You can solve that problem right now. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you can use our discount code, which is FTL20, to save 20% off of the price of that premium account. Whether you're buying it monthly or the annual plan, you'll save 20%. Now, of course, the annual plan is the best deal. That breaks the price down to about 5 bucks a month. That's an incredible value for what you're getting from ProXPN, because you're getting more than just the protection from your ISP snooping on you, or maybe uh, the administrator of the coffee shop uh, sniffing out what you're doing with their internet connection. Wherever it is you are, you get that protection. Uh, but also, you can connect to different servers around the world. You can use, say, their Nether- Netherlands server to do private torrenting where you are protected. Uh, by the, the the laws of the Netherlands, which are much better for privacy when you're doing torrents. So very, very cool stuff with ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get started. Risk-free, seven-day money-back guarantee. You've got nothing to lose except your privacy. Again, promo code there, FTL20, to save 20% for the lifetime of your account at ProXPN.com slash FTL. We should start into, shortly, these reasons, according to Chris Cantwell, why libertarians aren't nice, which, of course, I disagree with the the, kind of the premise of the title. I think most of the libertarians in the Free State Project are very, very nice people. Uh, but there's a certain narrative out there about the Free State Project. Well, it's not that you're not nice. It's not they're not nice to you, is what the uh, title is. But go ahead. Oh, okay. I thought it was 10 Reasons Why Libertarians Aren't Nice to You or something like yeah, that. Yeah, le- not nice. It's not that they're not nice. It's that they're not nice to you. Well, I, I disagree fundamentally with that uh, that title. I think libertarians are very nice. Uh, people I think he's and, talking about online, people that search online, you know, why are libertarians jerks? Oh, you think he's only talking about online? Well, I think there are plenty of people who think that libertarians are jerks. Uh, they yes, think in this town that is certainly um, seems it's to also be also true in Bedford. Uh, anywhere the, the Free State Project has gotten some level of press and renown for doing activism, the haters come out of the woodwork. Much of the uh, stuff that they quote in the Bedford situation is stuff that happened in Keene, though, right? Like, don't, don't, <clears throat> That's me. true. Robin Hood was uh, was brought up. But also, Garrett Ian, who's uh, basically a Concord native, was also cited by a Bedford. There's an article written by a Bedford voter. But he lives in Keene. Voter. Well, he does now. But, Mark, the uh, the article cited Garrett Ian's activism that he did in Concord right. at a, uh, what was it, some sort of farmer's market. He went there and set up a lemonade stand without asking the farmer's market's 
uh, permission to do that. Now, it's on public land where this farmer's market happens there. So it wasn't like he was trespassing or anything like that. But uh, so he, you know, he did that before he had made the move to Keene. So there's a certain style of activism, yeah. this sort of direct action, getting out there and doing things, but doing things besides just begging politicians that really ruffle some feathers. And, uh, and most of it's ignorance, right? Like it's people that's that have. That's what I'm saying. But well, it, that doesn't make them look. The world's full of ignorant people. Sorry to tell you, Ian. I'm wading through a world full of ignorant yeah, people. That's true. Um, and it's not news to me. You, you know, I mean, so it's not about whether or not you can educate them, because frankly, here's here's a truism for you: ignorant people don't want your damn education. Right. They're fine how they are. They don't like the uh, they don't like the threat to the status quo. They right. don't like having they to don't, think. They don't want to have to bother with that. So what? In fact, how do you how do you approach somebody who doesn't want to think? You you approach them. You know, you make them feel good and positive mm. about things, and that. But people don't feel good about change. Generally, humans are uh, are kind of averse to changing their circumstance in life. Even though change is natural and change is inevitable, uh, it's it's constant. Essentially, people still push back against it. It feels uh, uncomfortable in a lot of ways, especially if the change involves new ideas that are untested, or so it seems, or new ideas that seem scary because of what might lurk out there in the future. People get very, very frightened about the po potential for change, which is one of the reasons why the Free State Project is, uh, is so controversial. There are people who well, are very interested in keeping things as they are. They think things are just fine. What do you free state? You free staters want more freedom? We're plenty free here in New Hampshire. We don't need you. I have to add that the the that the state is an institution that changes that is the slowest adapting institution in history. Well, yeah. right, it's right there in their name. Right. You, I mean, you can't live a modern <laughs> life without outpacing it. I, it's, I, I absolutely concur with that, one hundred percent. You're not going to get me to hear here to defend the state and the way that it, uh, you know, it, it is a hierarchical organization that wishes to slow change. That's its its all. That's its whole um, purpose. But I would like to point out that there are free staters that, and and like minded people in New Hampshire that have managed to, you know, with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, create a libertarian veto which disallows the vast majority of statist. Uh, legislation here in um, in New Hampshire from passing through largely unopposed. Mostly, you don't see people all upset about it. When you hear people talking about their levels of upset, some of the first things they're going to say is the activism that's occurred in Keene. They may not even live in Keene. Yeah, but that's not necessarily true. There are people who will cite the idea that we want to get rid of the government. Yeah, uh, they because, will. But there's, you know, that's but a scary oftentimes thing. Oftentimes you're just talking about a few people who are writing stuff on the internet. They are outnumbered by the reps themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're talking about the Democrat activists, of like which Susan there are the dozens. From, right. There are uh, dozens of these people. They're actually outnumbered by the Free Stater activists. Mm -hmm. And so I get where you're but coming from. it doesn't from. matter. That meme spreads among people. It oh, doesn't, these are anarchists. Yes, they it, want to destroy well, I don't know that it spreads. our way it's, of life. I think it spreads because of the activism of the, the, the Free Keeners, frankly. I mean, it adds mm. so much fuel to the fire. Their complaints of the uh, Democrat activists are often just the spark that is caught by the kindling of, look at these people, and they're topless, and they're smoking pot, and all the uh, you know the nonsense that they say. And I can support every one of these pieces of activism that you guys have done individually. I can. Mm. I'm just saying that, look, if we are, because uh, something happened over the weekend that I haven't yet, um, we haven't talked about, and I don't have firm numbers, and so I'm a little concerned with uh, talking about it too much. But an activist moved in. He took the opportunity to pose as a uh, reporter. Now, as mm. far as I'm concerned, anybody with a blog is a reporter, so I don't think he's lying. Yeah. He just pretended to be a reporter. Uh, well, pretend. He, he he also has his own radio show. Presented himself as a reporter. So accurate. It's, yeah. it's an accurate statement. It's just I don't know how to describe it. Um, he And this, by the way, a great way to meet people at bars. Uh, so he goes around <laughs> at a bar and uh, it says, hey, Kill I'm one. a reporter. I'm here doing, here doing a story on the Free Staters. What do you think? Uh, half, about half of the people, slightly less than half, didn't really know what he was talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Free Stater, what's that? Um, and and this is in Keene. In Keene. And actually he did it um, around other places, and the vast majority didn't know what a Free Stater was, and the few people that did had relatively negative things to say. Okay. Um, the, but uh, in Keene, about half of them did, and the vast majority of them had negative things to say, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a couple of them had sort of positive things to say. Mostly they'd say something like, well, I support them feeding parking meters, but I don't support them harassing 
meter maids. Now, free staters have nothing to do with the Robin Hooding um, thing, other than some free staters participate in Robin Hooding. It's about half free staters, half New Hampshire natives. Right, but it's not endorsed by the Free State Project. So it's ignorance to suggest that uh, the Robin Hooding is a free state that has anything to do with free staters. Sure. Well, of course, those people are wrong. Uh, they believe that Robin Hooders are harassing the government bureaucrats. I don't care if they're wrong, Ian. Uh, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. And I don't care if they're wrong either. And people are going to be wrong and misinformed. That's how people are because they don't pay attention to what's going on around them. More coming up. Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian. Johnny Ray. And Mark. And don't forget, uh, you can go over to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there for free. Plus, another great website, freedomsphoenix.com. You can go there and get real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. They offer up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Dot com. I'm going to play uh, a video here in a little bit that I think kind of is a recent example of one of these situations where some people are going to look at this video and they're going to say, why those activists, they sure are awful. Because that's kind of what we've been discussing for the, the last hour is this, this conflict within the activism world. Uh, in our case, we're liberty-minded activists within the liberty activism world about, well, you know, what's the best way to go about bringing people to the ideas of freedom? Is that, should that be the number one goal of all activism or is some activism appropriate that just kind of is based on principle and just coming from the heart and doing what's right, even if it is something that upsets the people who observe that activism? Well, there's a, yeah, there's a strong um, undercurrent in society of people that are just like, you know, whatever the activism might be, whatever it is you're doing and you feel strongly enough about to, uh, you know, to not get paid by being active in this way, shape or form, mm-hmm. people are going to tell you to shut up, sit down and shut up. Hey, Get a job oh, yeah, and, and yeah. Well, uh, you know, things like this. And what they one. what they mean is, is that I don't value whatever you're doing as strongly as you do. Uh, OK, um, the I have only so many minutes in my life. If I choose to spend those minutes holding a sign on the side of the road, protesting for peace or whatever it is that I'm doing. Who the hell do you think you are to, t- to yell, get a job at me? Really? Who are you? Because I don't value, you know, I should go, I, I, maybe I have a job. Maybe this is my off time. You know, what, whatever somebody's saying, they're saying that is, I mean, you know, it is a, an incredibly vapid and banal thing to have come out of your mouth. Um, you know, you may either agree or disagree with what I have to say, but mostly people don't really care about that as much as it's just like, I don't want to see your protests. It reminds me of the situation where, um, you know, there's some kind of experiment. I don't know if this actually happened, but I've read about it. So let's, let's presume it did. Well, you know, they did with uh, chimpanzees or monkeys or whatever. They put a ladder in they, um, so, and some bananas at the top. And they, every time a mm-hmm. monkey would go for the bananas, um, they'd spray all the monkeys in the room with uh, cold water. Yep. And then pretty quickly, whenever a monkey decides to climb the uh, the ladder, this may be apes, I'm not sure, um, all the rest of the monkeys would be like, grab them and pull them down and yep. you know, be rough with them. Because they're trying to make their life better and do something that, that motivates them. The rest of them are like, no, no, this is only negative for us. And... You know, the state for 9,000 years, the existence of this hierarchical form of governance, human governance that we've had, that people seem to think that, oh, my God, just because things have been this way, they can't be any other way, um, that, you know, we've gotten a lot of negative reinforcement about speaking out. And, yeah, I mean, you know, I oftentimes see people who are doing things on the street that are out of the ordinary, meaning that they're not walking around eating ice cream or shopping at shops or whatever you're supposed to do on the street. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, sometimes they're uh, street performers and buskers and things like this, and I either find them entertaining or I don't. And sometimes they're people that are protesting. I'm like, oh, God, I do not want to interact with this guy and his crazy nonsense or, you know, whatever that might be. But I, I don't under it, it's just this sort of very human way to be is to like, shut up, sit down. No more out of you. Regarding yeah. video, videotaping, video recording people. Yes. Uh I imagine some people don't like that. Consider it rude. Oh yeah. Now, I am imagining somebody videotaping me now, and I'm very vain, so it, so I'm not uncomfortable at all. Mm-hmm. I, I'm fine with it. But it's like the public speaking thing, right? I mean, it's kind of like that. You know, people's greatest fear is public speaking. Uh huh. Somebody holding a camera on you suddenly becomes public speaking. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, uh, we make. Exceptions, though, in your activism for public servants because they're being because they're public servants, so they they don't have an expectation of privacy. I That's think correct. is the way that you always put it. Uh, and I agree with that. 
the little old lady with the stop sign, I guess she she didn't see things that way. She didn't see herself as a public servant. Well, she just saw herself as, I think she did see herself as a public servant, but she believed that she had a right to privacy. You know, So she didn't understand what all is associated with being a so-called public servant. A lot of those people wear the, the badge of public service with pride. I mean, they, they are very, very happy and proud to be involved in administrating the state. I mean, this woman is helping kids cross the street. I mean, what could be more of an innocent activity than that? She is unassailable in her mind and in other people's minds. Yeah, so so if they pass the test of being a public servant, then I'm okay with doing doing rude things to them mm-hmm. because they they signed up for it. Well, and I don't consider, and again, it also depends on what you consider rude. I don't consider standing on a public street corner taking B-roll of something happening in real life to be a rude thing to do. But a lot of people are upset by that. A lot of people feel like, even if they're not speaking on the camera, because she wasn't when uh, when he first uh, started rolling, he said hello, then she started yelling. Uh, but there are you know people who will be upset by simply of the virtue of the fact that you recorded them, even if it's just them walking or uh, so them being in the frame. They'll be upset about that. It's like you're right. stealing their soul, and they're very very upset about it's, that. Uh, you that know, they own their the photons that are bouncing off of their body. I think that um, yeah, to some extent, I think that they feel that way. Like there's just, there's two there's two things here. There's the being recorded in public, which people really don't have much of an argument against, because the fact is you're being recorded all of the almost all the time. Security cameras are very prolific. They're prolific they're all over the place you're being recorded it's not like you really have much of a choice in that but the other thing is sort of the holding of the camera it's the here's a person doing something that's out of the ordinary Mm -hmm. people don't generally walk around with cameras slung up you know uh, by their head um you know going around if you were to have say one of these life cams which is like a um a bluetooth headset but actually has a camera in it or the google Google glass Glass. i I was hanging out at a bluetooth conference yesterday i went to went to the one in new york city guy had google glass everybody walking around talking to themselves at a bluetooth conference did I say Bluetooth? I mean, yeah. Bitcoin. Um, you did say Bluetooth. I'm sorry. I'd, <laughs> I'm just I'd, trying I'd, to imagine a Bluetooth conference, a bunch of guys in suits walking around with those little clip-on ear things talking funny. to themselves. Wait, hold on. What's the difference between Bitcoin and Bluetooth? I thought it was the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I saw somebody, uh, you know, more than one person with Google Glass there. And, you know, I mean, I, I didn't feel the need to uh, confront them about video recording me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they were recording you or wouldn't have done recording. that anyway. If no, somebody I was wouldn't. walking around with a video camera, you'd probably want to hit them up for an interview. Right. Well, it, likely. The, that's that's but your vein me personally and you're egocentric. But the, I think that I personally think that a person should be able to walk around and document their life. I agree. As they go around with a camera, that's my belief. But I also see why people are like, uh, you know, I I think I have a right to my own image. I mean, if you don't have a right to your image. People consider, well, what do you have a right to? Mm. But I kind of feel like, look, if you went out in public and the sun is striking you and those white light yeah. photons are bouncing into my eyes, what's the difference between bouncing into my eyes and me recording it in my brain and then bouncing into this uh, camera and me recording it into its computer brain? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Maybe uh, you should wear a burqa. The, the law, of course, as I understand it, and I could be wrong on this, but it's my understanding that the law does specify some level of protection for people who are uh, use, who have their images used for commercial purposes. And so, you know, like uh, the, the, the classic example is the girls in the Girls Gone Wild videos or whatever who uh, they didn't sign, a, sign some sort of consent form and somebody put them in this video and now these guys are making money off of them uh, getting topless in front of a video camera. I, I'm with the, the law on that one. That's fine by me. That's a distinction that I can live with. But does that mean that, uh, let's say, my, my movie, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, that was all filmed in reality. Not one face is blurred from that movie. And there are certain scenes where members of the public are, you know, identifiable, uh, should we be able to be sued for that? I think it's interesting. I mean, is it a documentary? Is it for profit? You know, what? Um, at this point, have you made money on it? Not really. No. Did you expect to make money on it? No. I didn't think you did either. Um, so, I mean, to some extent, there's this motive aspect to it. Uh, you're making it available to people. Like, So if I document my life, this is a life of Mark in one day. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and I just put it up on the internet with no expectation of profiting from it. Um, then, but we are selling DVDs. Yeah, I understand. Then what is that? Well, what if I put a Bitcoin link there that says, help me keep this website up, up? Yeah. Of the documentation. Um, and then, right. Do you have an obligation to go and get permission slips from everyone who happened to appear in your 
little and, movie. And then anything above what I get for uh, running the website, I'll uh, donate to charity or whatever. So, uh, have you guys seen, because the video I want to play here, and it's a little on the lengthy side, uh, have you guys seen the new Census Taker video? I've seen I've seen some of it. Seen some of it? I don't think so. Because we had somebody call into the show. I don't know if you were on this edition, Mark, but I think it was last week. Uh, somebody called into the show saying this American Community Survey person came by. Now, this is the census Happens in, bet- all the time, yeah. in between the census. Right. And they were wondering, what do you do about this? Well, it happened to a free stater in Manchester, and he recorded it. We'll come back with more. In 1952, Martha's parents drove her home in their brand spanking new coupe they just insured with a spiffy outfit called Geico. In 1967, Chad got a far-out policy from Geico and saved himself some bodacious bread. In 1994, Natalie got the 411 from her homegirls on a fat with a PH insurance policy from Geico. Word to your mother. Over the past 75 years, the expressions have changed, but one thing hasn't. Saving money with Geico. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-443-7087. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus guaranteed 100% risk-free. Call 1-800-443-7087. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, April 8th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.14 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,312 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $451. Business Insider reports, in military slang, predator drone operators often refer to their victims as bug splats, since viewing the body through a grainy video image gives the sense of an insect being crushed. To challenge this insensitivity, as well as raise awareness of civilian casualties, an artist collective installed a massive portrait facing up in the heavily bombed Khaibar Pakhtunkhwa region of Pakistan, where drone attacks regularly occur. Now, when viewed by a drone camera, what an operator sees on his screen is not an anonymous dot on the landscape, but an innocent child victim's face. The installation is also designed to be captured by satellites in order to make it a permanent part of the landscape on online mapping sites. The project is a collaboration of artists who made use of the French artist J.R.'s Inside Out movement. The Foundation for Fundamental Rights helped launch the effort, which has been released with the hashtag NotABugSplat. The child featured in the poster is nameless, but according to FFR, lost both her parents and two young siblings in a drone attack. The group of artists traveled inside KPK province and, with the assistance of highly enthusiastic locals, unrolled the poster amongst mud huts and farms. It is their hope that they will create empathy and introspection among drone operators and will create dialogue amongst policymakers, eventually leading to decisions that will save innocent lives. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. 
Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, this should be rather obvious, but a recent study shows that the less informed you are, the worse your policy recommendations are likely to be. Specifically, you are much more likely to advocate U.S. military intervention in Ukraine if you're also someone who can't find Ukraine on a map. The Washington Post reports, between March 28th and March 31st, we asked a national sample of 2,066 Americans, fielded via Survey Sampling International Incorporated, or SSI, what action they wanted the U.S. to take in Ukraine, but with a twist. In addition to measuring standard demographic characteristics and general foreign policy attitudes, we also asked our survey respondents to locate Ukraine on a map as part of a larger ongoing project to study foreign policy knowledge. We wanted to see where Americans think Ukraine is and to learn if this knowledge or lack thereof is related to foreign policy views. We found that only one out of six Americans can find Ukraine on a map and that this lack of knowledge is related to preferences. The farther their guesses were from Ukraine's actual location, the more they wanted the U.S. to intervene with military force. Only about 16% of Americans could locate Ukraine on a map. Some respondents placed Ukraine in Brazil or in the Indian Ocean. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Virgin America ranked highest among the nation's top 15 carriers in the Airline Quality Rating Report that looked at on-time performance, customer complaints, and lost bag rates, among other factors. The study also found that airline performance improved in 2013 over the previous year. The ratings report was produced by researchers at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and Wichita State University and was based on data collected by the U.S. Department of Transportation. In the ratings report, JetBlue Airways ranked second to Virgin America, followed by Hawaiian Airlines, Delta Airlines, and Alaska Airlines. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Everyone needs to get a justice shed. So you have a place to throw that little juvenile delinquent you caught loitering out on the street corner. This is not rocket science, people. I just call up my neighbors, Frank and Terry. We get out there with baseball bats, fishing nets, and we knock that suspect out. And we toss him in our justice shed. We just start dealing out some shovel beatings. That's democracy, people. That's the biggest benefit of the justice shed, people. You are in charge. Our justice shed was all filled up, so we created this justice cage. It's just as good. These guys, I think we caught them shoplifting, and this is my daughter's boyfriend. Look, if you don't have a yard big enough to place a justice shed in, go out and get yourself a justice barrel. I don't care. The important thing is to take control of your safety by any means necessary. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, we're launching here into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to share your thoughts with us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, Skype on in to the show at username lrn.fm. Tonight in the studio, it's Ian here. Johnny Ray. And Mark. Weekly Digest. We talked about it a few times in the past. It is an audio. Actually, there's two kinds of Weekly Digests. Uh, There's the 
the text version, the, the one that comes to your email box, and then there's the audio version of Free Talk Live's Weekly Digest. The difference being that the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest in text form is an email that kind of updates you on what the most popular stories were, the most voted up stories on the front page of freetalklive.com as submitted by you. So to kind of give you a summary of, uh, of your participation, of what you, the content that you have created. And then also the audio version of the Weekly Digest is essentially a boiled down they're, they're boiled down audio summary, if you will, although that's not really an accurate thing either because you can't summarize 21 hours of radio in an hour, but it's essentially it's, the it's, highlights. Yeah, the highlights of the week. As uh, according to one of our listeners, uh, right. Benjamin Bartholomew, who is— Don't you think—why do you keep calling him a listener? Don't you think he's part of our team? Well, yes, but he's also a listener because he listens to all 21 so hours. So am I. Of, no, you don't. You don't listen to all 21 hours oh. of Free Talk Live. You probably don't listen to one well, I, I, <laughs> every I, week. I, I get one every week. Um, the— I think that what, what so what qualifies as a listener now? I just don't think listener is the someone right someone who listens to the show. I've got a few words to say about Benjamin Bartholomew. Yeah, if he's I a may. great activist. Oh, the, the positive and on, he's a Free State Project participant as well. Well, he and I are friends on Battle.net, and I uh, mm-hmm. never see him in Hearthstone. And I'm really, I was kind of looking forward to um, metaphorically bouncing his head off the turnbuckle. <laughs> are you throwing out a challenge, Johnny Ray, to Benjamin? I guess I must be. Now, we I don't know if you have a game of the week this week, do you? I've just been playing Hearthstone, Hearthstone. the whole time. Well, maybe we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But the uh, the Weekly Digest, uh, Benjamin Bartholomew has essentially joined the team by virtue of the fact that he's doing this work uh, for the show. But he's doing it for the love of doing it. And I guess you know he's also in control of the content as well, so he can kind of pick what he, what he promotes. And uh, he's been doing such a great job of creating this Weekly Digest, which is about a, maybe an hour, hour and 15 minute long highlight reel of the last week's worth of Free Talk Live, Yep. Uh, that he's doing such a great, consistent job with it, uh, we decided we need to include this in the actual Free Talk Live podcast, because he had started with his own SoundCloud channel just for this, and uh, and that was kind of something that I wanted to do just as just to see if he would keep 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 at it. And I had a feeling he would, because really, he's a really dedicated activist, and he did. He's been doing it now for about three months, and he's been consistent, delivering them every single week. And they, they sound good. He does a good job editing them yeah, together. So you can go now and access the Weekly Digest. If you're already subscribing to our podcast, you'll all automatically begin receiving them. If you're someone who's listening to Free Talk Live who uh, is not a subscriber to our podcast, maybe you're just... You've, you don't have enough time to listen to 21. Let's let's be honest. Not everybody has time for this to listen to all 21 hours of free talk live every week. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yep. Uh, so if you do have an hour a week that you can listen to, then you really should subscribe to the new Weekly Digest podcast, which is essentially a filtered version of our full podcast. So if you go to weekly.freetalklive.com, it'll take you right to that filtered version, which only includes, so it's a special podcast that only includes the episodes of the Weekly Digest audio. So check that out at weekly.freetalklive.com. Let's go to the phones and to your thoughts. Then coming up, the census taker video. Uh, That's right. Even though it's not the census year, they're still out on the streets. We'll show you what one activist did here in New Hampshire in response. Robert, though, is first in Vermont. Go ahead, Robert. Hey, I wish you to all 21 hours of the show. Thank you for that, sir. I appreciate it. Then you qualify in a, as a listener in Ian's mind. I said anyone who listens to the show is a listener. Hey, Ian, oh. I want to share with you, uh, uh, tomorrow's going to be a real special day for me. Okay. I got a hearing I'm going to be going to. What kind of hearing? And I, um, I, got, I picked up some traffic tickets back this past February, and... Uh, I'd like you to be at this hearing tomorrow. It's going to be really interesting. <laughs> well, what kind of traffic tickets are you talking about? Well, I picked up a traffic ticket for a misuse of plate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, mus- the misuse part of it was there was snow all over it because we just had a snowstorm. Uh, the other ticket. Yeah, I, I see that was, everywhere. Um, yeah, um, I mean, people in New Hampshire barely, you can barely see their plates during the winter. Mm-hmm. If they're not covered in right. snow, they're covered in that. That gray yuck that comes from melted snow. Yep. <laughs> That's what they call misuse of plate. Right. You get. Okay. You don't have to clean your car, but you got to get out and you just scrub with soapy warm water your plates every time before you get in. Ridiculous. That's part Absolutely. of being a operating a motor vehicle in a safe uh, manner here in the state, of great state of Vermont. Right. Uh, the other ticket that I picked up was uh, the transportation of uh, of narcotics. Well, oh, that's not just a ticket, Robert. That's a felony charge. That's that's no that's not your average ticket. No, but the but the narcotics are AKA inflammatory pills. Mm-hmm. 
know, and you know, and then also, then also, you know, the possession of these pills, but uh, it's not going anywhere. Now, you, know, you had called uh, about this previously, and uh, and you're kind of a local here to the uh, the Keene area, so um, I had uh, kind of helped you out. You needed a ride. I, I took you over to the courthouse a couple weeks ago for the for the arraignment on this. I didn't realize you were, you had another hearing that quick. Uh, what's this? Oh, what's, sure. What is this next hearing going to be for, Robert? Uh, well, uh, it's supposed to be. Uh, it's probably going to end tomorrow. What makes you say that? I mean, they uh, they they found you with pills in your glove box. Uh, they are prescription pills for which you did not have a prescription, so they charged you with a felony. What makes you think that's going to end tomorrow? It's, I would guess you're going to have a pretrial conference. Well, because the pills that they found were anti-inflammatory pills, like an aspirin. I don't think it's going to matter. Um, were they yeah. prescription or were they over the counter? Uh, anybody can get them. Oh, so they're they were OTC. They're over the counter. Yes. Hmm. Well, I hope it goes and, well. Uh, well, I mean, according to what I'm being told, that if I got to go to that hearing tomorrow, it's all going to go downhill for them. Well, now, they you, they can't be over-the-counter and prescription at the same time. Am I right? That's correct. So, Robert, were they prescription pills or not? Um, That I don't know. So this is what your attorney is telling you because you hired uh, an attorney out of, I don't know where their office is, but it's in New Hampshire. It's the same attorney group that has taken on, uh, they took the Weta Claus case, the, which was for long-time yeah. listeners. Uh, Weta, yeah. Bob Weta Claus Constantine was accused of uh, growing cannabis, and so this is the same attorney's group. So they're very familiar with drug cases. So what you're saying right. is that your attorneys are saying they think that there's no case here. Uh, he's, my attorney's already called the county attorney and said, look, you know, this is not a felony. Hmm. It's not a felony at all. All right, Robert. Well, yeah, send me yeah. send me a message on Facebook and let me know what time your your thing's happening, and we'll put the word out to the activists in the area. See if we can get anybody out to uh, to support you on this. It's at one thirty tomorrow afternoon. All right, man. Uh, but send me the message on Facebook anyway, so I can just send that along to folks. And uh, and I guess we'll talk more maybe about what happens. And thanks for the call tonight. Thanks for the heads up. Good luck. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Now this was a pretty scary thing uh, for for Robert because he's never been involved in a felony situation like this. Whenever somebody brings a felony charge, the state brings a felony charge against you. That you it's know, pretty scary stuff. That's three years in prison, usually at minimum, for for most felony charges, and that's pretty intimidating. And you've got the cops, of course, saying, "Well, you know, this is you're going to go to prison for this, son. You're, you're going to need to take plea deal." We'll tell you what, we'll give you a plea deal. You can plea out. Uh, we'll just go ahead and give you six months probation. You'll you'll be convicted felon, but you know, you won't have to go to jail. How about that? You want to take the deal? And it's and a good it, way to uh, basically make it so everybody in America doesn't have to can't carry a gun. Yeah, yeah and it's true. a good way to get. A grand out of him? More? Sure. Well, they would have gotten money out of him for the uh, the public defender. He ultimately decided to not go with the public defender's office, but initially because he was, you know, kind of uncertain of what as to what to do in the situation, he initially had filled out the form that uh, re- requests public defender representation. And then, of course, when you do that, there are a lot of people who are under the mistaken belief that the public defender is supposed to be provided free. No, 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 no. Not if they think you can afford to pay for it. So when you ask for the public defender, they then give you a financial affidavit on which you will reveal how much money you make, how much you pay in rent, what, what kind of money is in your bank accounts, how much money you pay in taxes, all your financials. And then from that, they will determine as to whether or not you can afford to pay for said public defender. And of course, we all know how good a job public defenders tend to do at defending people. 855 450 freeze the toll free number. I'm not saying they don't try their best, some of them. Some of them are not so great. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping 
helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. The nation's quadriplegics immobilize on Washington in support of stem cell research. And a Penn State t-shirt is awkwardly looked away from. And now for the weekly feature your fragile, susceptible mind already has your lips salivating for. This is The Onion Week in Review. Sources reported today that 10-year-old Brandon Thomas, who is currently homesick at his friend Kevin's sleepover, needs to just tough it the f*** out. I don't feel like playing Xbox right now. The pathetic little bitch who claims he just doesn't feel like eating any birthday cake or joining in any activities with his friends, frankly needs to grow a pair because his parents only live 10 minutes away, for Christ's sake. Here's what the whiny pansy had to say for himself. I wasn't crying. It's just allergies. I want to go home. What a f***ing wuss. In other news, a voicemail from mom is deleted three words in, and a man with nice eyes is blown. All right, now off with you. I can't have you seeing me like this. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take your calls about anything that you want to discuss here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. Still to come, the 10 reasons why libertarians aren't nice to you, according to Chris Cantwell, who is an expert on the subject. Uh, <laughs> we will also share your thoughts if you dial in toll free. You can join us on Skype as well. We've got a Skype username of lrn.fm. You just send a contact request first to that name, and then it'll be approved. Usually during the next break, we'll just approve whatever comes through. And then you'll be easily able to contact us in that way. And, of course, you can join us on our website at freetalklive.com. So, LeaderAmp, this is a groundbreaking program that will, instead of, um, you know, uh, dealing with you in the, the form, the written form, as far as books go, um, they have created an app. Now, what do they do? They um, have a program that... I'm just going to show you how to be 
um, develop better persuasion skills, how to be better in the area of uh, personal development and, and things like that. A lot of people can use this, salespeople, uh, probably my first thought, uh, business leaders. But I think the average person, just people working in offices, you know, there's all kinds of trying to get your project done and that kind of thing. If you can deal well with people, if you can convince people, it helps you in your family life and, and business life. So everybody really needs a, um, you know, a skill set in being more convincing. This isn't the kind of thing they teach you in high school. Now, there's a lot of stuff out there as far as books go. Some information's good, some information's bad. None of it's really tested as for what works and what doesn't. LeaderAmp does that. Dr. Matt Barney has uh, been coaching people, thousands of people, um, and lead successful leaders around the world for the last 20 years using the latest science of what works. So Dr. Barney's drafted blueprints for a new smartphone application that's going to measure each person and tailor a custom customized developmental plan for you. Now, I've signed up for this because I think this this is going to be really valuable for me. It's $25. That's like the cost of a hardcover book. Not that big of a deal. So if I was going to go out to get the new greatest new self-help book, I'd spend this anyway, and it wouldn't be customized for me. It wouldn't show me where my strengths are. It wouldn't show me where my weaknesses are. are. They wouldn't. It wouldn't rate me against other people on the social networking sort of end that they have uh, for this, and it wouldn't sh rate me against other sort of historical people. I think that's really valuable, and you should go check it out. Leader Amp, that's Leader Amp. Dot freetalklive.com. We've shortened it up. It's an Indiegogo campaign. It's going to take a little while for them to deliver, but rest assured they're already developing the app. So, you know, when you sign up for 25 bucks, you're going to get what you signed up for. Leaderamp.freetalklive.com. We had a gentleman call into the show last week, and I don't remember which day it was. So, I don't, Mark, do you recall if you were here for the census call? I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think you were. So, it must have been, uh, must have been, call one it a Friday? No, because I wasn't here Friday either. Well, anyway, somebody called last week at some point, and uh, they brought up the fact that here it is, not a, uh, uh, you know, a end of a decade. Usually the census is supposed to be an every 10 years sort of thing. Here we are in 2014, and somebody came knocking on his door, asking him to take, or not asking, but kind of threatening with the idea that this is a mandatory thing, uh, threatening him to take this census, which is called the American Community Survey, I believe. And it's something that they do on off years between the right. census. And this isn't just like the census where they ask you a few questions and they're on their way. This is things exhaustive. Is it? I've never taken the census. I thought so the I, census was exhaustive too. Yeah, I thought so. It's my understanding. The census is like 10 questions. Really? The one, the one I took was uh, like 10 questions. Well, the woman in this, uh, in this video, the census taker, she claims that normally this only takes six minutes. Okay. So I don't know how exa I don't know what you consider right. to be exhaustive. That could be wrong. It's certainly intrusive, uh, and you'll get some of the questions that she intends to ask here when we play the video. Now this is the full cut of this video uh, that that exists. It's the full interaction that Free State Project early mover uh, Robert Mathias. Well, he's more recent early mover, but everybody who moves right now is a early mover for the Free yeah, State Project. I guess I was on for this. Now that you mention it, he's a newer mover and uh, mover to Manchester. He's from Chicago. And he's been really great at getting out there and using his video skills, recording his uh, his activists' interactions and other activism that's been going on out there in Manchester, which I've been grateful for. And, I, and because he did that and has been doing such a great job, I invited him to be one of the bloggers at freekeen.com because I think it's important for us to see some of the things that are going on out there. And sometimes... Activism comes to you. Sometimes the opportunity for activism comes to you. We were talking earlier in the show about sort of second guessing yourself and, you know, wondering whether or not you should do something activisty because, well, what will people think of this? And this is one of those videos where people are going to be polarized on this, even though what even though Robert is fully within his rights, in my opinion, to refuse to answer the census questions, which he does do. He refuses to answer them in this video. There are many people who are going to watch this and say, well, what's wrong with this guy? Why can't he just answer these questions? These aren't unreasonable questions. Hey, they're just trying to help the fire department with uh, giving them information about who's in the home, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's all kinds of excuses as to why he should just go along to get along and give this woman the information she's requesting. Now, even Robert, and he may be uh, checking in with us here in a little bit. I know he's on the road right now. But uh, even Robert has, after the fact, 
analyzed his performance in this video. Because what I'd like to point out is that just because I'm saying don't overanalyze what you're going to do for activism to the point of inaction doesn't mean I'm not that doesn't mean I'm saying you shouldn't critique yourself after the fact. That doesn't mean that you couldn't do something more effectively to tweak your message to be more effective in the future. But in the case of some things like this, he didn't know she was going to show up. Woman shows up at the door, he grabs a video camera and boom, you're in the you're into it. This is your your chance to do some activism and you don't have a chance to really think this through too much. So this is um right Ian. So I've been th this evening I've been sort of asking questions trying to uh, get you to think about ways that uh, one can do active activism in a way that uh, perhaps uh, creates better feelings in the community. Maybe you know, maybe that's possible. I'm not saying that in any one instance I think that you know something has been done wrong. I think you're absolutely within your rights to grab a – when somebody knocks on your door, mm -hmm. grab a camera, have an interaction with that person at the door. If you don't feel like answering that person's questions that seem intrusive and weird, then don't answer their questions and you know videotape them until they leave. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I didn't say you thought there was yeah, anything just wrong with let that, you know. but there are plenty of people who would have a problem with what Robert Matthews did There are Matthews lots of statists in this out video. there. Lots right. the of video, people that... the, the, the bit of the video, I watched probably two, two and a half minutes of it, and it put me off. A part of it put me off. What part? The part how when it when it didn't end. And it kept going on and on and on and on and on. So you would have preferred he just closed the door and um, broke off the conversation? Because basically the video, yes, but he, he lets I, her go through her questions, even though he won't answer them. Yeah, I wish that he had stopped earlier. I wish he had made his point and stopped. Yeah, I uh, and I think that his own critique of himself was that he felt he pushed his point a little too hard. And you'll get his point here in a moment. I'm going to give you the, just a teaser, and then we'll continue with the, with this. United States Census Bureau. My name is Chris, okay. and this is the American Community Survey. Hang on to that. That's going to be your part. And... Uh, I'll first be asking some questions about people who are living or staying at this address. And I, if I could use that as a little desk, I can type two-handed. And what is She's your name? Standing there I don't want to give that out. Okay. With a laptop. So she, hold on just a second. She has a desk like attached to her chest or something? No, I don't know what she's talking about because she walks over. She, she indicates something that's out of the camera range as she wants to use that as a desk. She then walks over there and then comes back. So I'm not really sure if she intended to go and sit down, but there wasn't a chair. I really don't know what happened there. More I'll up, just though. make myself at home. We'll play the video in moments. I have bought a few bottles of heart and body extract and have to say that it, it certainly does work. That's what Jack from Michigan had to say after his experience with heart pain and what he did to treat it with heart and body extract. I actually had a huge heart flutter. I was also having some edema around my ankles and very worrisome clot in my uh, right leg that would happen from time to time while I was trying to sleep. Heart and body extract is all natural with no negative side effects. It will help repair or correct past problems associated with the heart and body circulation. After my second bottle of heart and body extract, all problems are now gone. Order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. I ordered a third bottle of heart and body extract for maintenance as I want to keep everything working. Order heart and body extract at 866-295-5305 or hbextract.com. Heart and body extract for a long and healthy life. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? 
For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. What happens when you say no to a census taker? We've got the audio here from uh, one of the activists who moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. His name is Robert Mathias. He is a newer mover coming from the Chicago area. Had a census worker show up at his front door. And we'll continue with the audio here in moments of what the interaction was like. Because a lot of people, you know, they have they they know that the census people are going to come around at some point. They like the idea of not answering the questions. But at the same time, it's supposed to be mandatory. And what happens to you? If you don't answer those questions, we'll explore that here in moments. So I'm sure you've heard about Bitcoins. I just said that I came back from a Bitcoin event. A lot of people have heard about Bitcoins, but what they really don't know is how to get Bitcoins. So here's how you get Bitcoins. Go to cashintocoins.com. The instructions there at the website are are they're clear, they're easy, it's, it's safe, fast, completely legal, um, inexpensive. Their process, they make it so that the average person can do it. Is all you have to do is use a money order, check, or wire transfer. You send them money. Now, um, you may feel a little, little freaked out about sending people a wire transfer to people you've never dealt with. I've sent a great deal of money to cashintocoins.com to get um, bitcoins. And I have actually traded back bitcoins with them too. They are an organization Mm -hmm. that you can trust. They do what they say they're going to do. When they have a customer service problem, they handle it quickly. I can tell you there was a customer service problem one time. Um, I was trading back bi- bitcoins in with them, and you have to you have to have a, a sizable amount uh, if you're going to trade bitcoins back in with them. They don't just uh, do that as a normal uh, course of business. But this is what was happening, and I told them, hey, you know, you don't have to go and get a cashier's check to do this. Well, in true bank fashion, they wrote a regular check to my mom, and the bank went and bounced their check. They're like, what? Mm-hmm. We had funds to cover it. But, you know, I've having had a, a commercial bank account in the past, I know what it's like when, um, yeah, they just go ahead and they don't worry about your deposits. They just worry about your withdrawals and then uh, bounce it. Nonetheless, they next day aired a cashier's check to her the next day. So that's what uh, that's how they took care of that. And that's the kind of people I want to do business with. Cashintocoins.com. Orders under $40. Carry no fee. And you can donate some of your fee to charity. Cashintocoins.com. Let's go to the phones, and we'll continue the video here from the census or from uh, early mover Robert Mathias here, the uh, Free State Project early mover, where he interacts with a U.S. census worker at his front door and refuses to answer her questions. Joe is first, though, in Idaho. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Joe. 
Well, good evening, gentlemen. What's on uh, your mind tonight? Regarding that uh, that U.S. Census, <clears throat> the uh, the lawful one is where they get to ask one question, and that is how many people live in this home. Yes, that's what yeah, uh, no. that's that's what sort of is constitutional. I'm not going to answer that question either. I don't care what their law says. Uh, well, be that as it may, um, when they sent out when they sent out those census forms in the mail, it has your address on it. And it has all these little boxes that you can check, you know, how many guns do you have, how many prostitutes live in the home, and all this stuff. Um, but you'll notice up in the upper, well, at least the last one, in the upper left-hand corner, it basically says how many people live in the home. That's the only one that you're required to answer. Uh, but and all How am I required them, to answer that? Yeah, well, They write things down on paper. I'm not sure how that creates an obligation for me to do anything. Well, it's it's for a por- apportionment to uh, determine how many representatives don't care in your in your yeah I understand. All right, gentlemen, well, I appreciate your time. Hey, thanks, Joe. <laughs> appreciate hearing from you. Eight fifty five four fifty three. You don't tell me what this, I have to do. This is what it's like talking to a zealot, folks. <laughs> Joe's well, just trying to tell you what is legal. I don't care. And that's his interpretation of what's legal. Well, that's what was written down in the Constitution. I okay. think that that's what's legal. I didn't now, sign that. You know what did you, you did? Nope, didn't either. Look, yeah, man, but that's what. But that's what legal means. Joe didn't claim that you were obligated. He just claimed that you were legally obligated, and there's a difference mm. there. That means that hey, if you don't do it, it's possible that people from the government might come and do bad things to you. They might do that anyway. They might, but uh, they they like to have excuses, and that might be uh, an excuse. Have you ever heard of anyone doing that because of the census? No, but I've done Me different. Neither. I did something different with the census. You refused if you refused to answer them, you filmed them, and that's, that's right. whatever. When they came to my house, uh, I think it was the second time they showed up. The first time, my wife's just like. You can talk to my husband. Because she knew that I wasn't going to want to miss this. And I invited the lady in and got her something to drink. And, um, and, and you know, I said, look, you know this is weird, right? Coming around and asking people a bunch of questions. Mm. And she's like, well, you know, this is what I Just do. Just my job. But wait, 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 I, I don't, it's, I'm, it's not that you do it. It's a, your job's weird. This is a weird job <laughs> coming around and asking people questions. Oh, but we need it for this, that, and the other thing. I, you know. Yep. You're going to hear that in this video. I don't really care about that because I don't really use those services very much. Um, so, you know, public school, my son's never going to go to a public school. She saw him pl- playing around there. It's pretty obvious how many people live in the house when she's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's showing her his uh, she came action, inside? Fi- action figures and stuff. Oh, yeah, I invited her in. Okay. And, I, and I said, here, to, to show you how weird this is, I'm going to get out a legal pad, and I'm going to ask you the same questions that you ask me. Every question you answer... I'll answer. And I'm going to write down the answers. I'm going to keep it in a file. And she said, okay. And so every time she'd ask me a question, I'd look her in the eye with the blankest bureaucrat face I could come up with. And I'd ask the question, you know, back to her. And she she would answer the question to the point that she's actually asking the question and answering it before I have a chance (laughs) to repeat it for her. (laughs) And so I have all her information somewhere saved. So you did give up all the info then. She called called your bluff. How long did it take? Oh, it wasn't long at all. Right. I don't care, Ian. How long? Does it really matter what... In, I, maybe 10 minutes? 10 I don't, minutes. I have right. no clue. So this lady says this is only supposed to take six minutes. The video itself is about 16. So this happened years ago. Yeah. Jump in here from the Voluntarist Rebel channel on YouTube. He uh, just She's just barely getting started with the, the survey. Fine. All right, she's got um, her laptop. Somebody on the comments actually... T- says, why doesn't she have a tablet? They cost 50 bucks. <laughs> She's standing there trying to balance this clunky looking laptop there. <laughs> That's a good question. Here? Anybody else besides two people living here? I'm not answering any questions. Now, sh- she didn't answer. He did not answer at any point uh, whether anybody lives there. She just knew how many people she were living saw- there. She saw what is purported to be his roommate, and I believe she jumped to a conclusion about who's living at the home. Unless he actually did answer that question prior to the beginning of the, the video starting. But anyway, here we go. Okay, this is a mandatory survey. It's an American <laughs> Community Survey sponsored by the Census Bureau, but it's by the Housing and uh, is Washington, D.C. Is, is that supposed to mean anything to me? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So the following questions are <laughs> so to be sure I know what I'm dealing with here. Yeah, she you know, she's such a nice lady, right? She's this woman doesn't think of herself. Well, that's who as they a, hire right. for this. They don't hire mean people for this. They don't want mean people. They want very nice people, outgoing, yeah. gregarious people that are willing and interested in talking to you. 
That's exactly who they hire for this. And But she doesn't really want to have a conversation because every time he makes a decent point or says something important, she just kind of blows past it. This list is a com as complete as possible. Two males. Is there anyone else, anyone else staying here even for a short time, such as a friend or a relative? I'm not answering any questions. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> She's entering in some sort of data here to, to her laptop. Now I'll ask some basic questions about people in the household. Subject I'm hostile. I'm with person. <laughs> two are roommates, correct? I'm not answering any questions. Okay. Right. Uh, again, any information you do provide is held uh, protected under law. And Sure it is. You believe that one, right? I don't care. I don't care if it's protected by law or not. They lose your information all the time. Their mm -hmm. bureaucrats will steal it. They sell it out on the black market. Sometimes they'll lose a laptop at an airport. These people know nothing of security because there are no consequences for what they do. If this woman's laptop gets lost... Uh, on uh, out of the street, then you yep. know, is she going She's to have not to, liable? Is she going to have to pay you back for no. all the information that? To, no, and don't think that they. When they say crap like that, they're not responsible. That's what the government's all about: people that aren't responsible. All right, we're going to get into this here. Uh, they get into kind of a meaty conversation in a moment. Eight fifty five four fifty free is the toll free number. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. And if you've had an experience with a census worker and you want to share that with us, you can do that here on the air on Free Talk Live. We'll continue with more in moments. 855-450-FREE. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We are sharing with you some audio from a video that you can go and watch right now at freekeen.com. I'll put the link on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter so you can actually see what's going on here but uh, it's a census taker in 2014 so not a census year but turns out they're always out there doing invasive surveys uh this one's called the american community survey as i understand it and uh, it is something that is done throughout the the decade in which they aren't actually doing the actual census and they also claim this is mandatory too so you know their claim is that anytime their agents come to your door that you must answer all their intrusive questions well what else would they claim free state project early mover robert Matthias does not answer this woman's questions even though she continues to persist in asking them even though he's told her more than once so far in just the two minutes or the minute or so that we played of this video that he is not going to answer any questions she continues to ask them anyway because you know what she's just doing her job yeah i wouldn't be surprised if they get briefed before they go out that look a lot of these people are not going to answer your questions your job is to ask them so ask them ask them all and you've done your job so we continue here with uh, the video as we uh, will run some commentary and then actually we'll talk to robert Matthias after uh, we're after all is said and done he can give us his perspective on how things went here so she's punching things into a laptop she's kind of holding uncomfortably what is your birthday one hand and your roommates not answer any questions okay at some point, Robert will editorialize on his opinion. Are you a Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin? I'm a human being. Now, is she jumping I think this to a conclusion? Is so, so offensive. Is she jumping to a conclusion about what he looks like there? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm sure it's just it's all part of the formula. You think that's one of the questions, or do you, th- or do you think that? Well, uh, what the, I think that's I one think of the questions, yeah. and I think that she's reading it to him the same way she's read it to everybody else. There's because his last name is Matthias, and I believe he is maybe. That, that that may be a true, you know, if he had answered yes, that might have been a true statement. Well, um, they... I'm going out on a limb. What they'll do oftentimes is if you answer yes to white, do you consider yourself to be, you know, Hispanic or, or white or black for that mm-hmm. matter? Do you consider yourself to be Hispanic also? Like it's a sub question. I see. But I don't answer any of these questions. I have never, I haven't answered race questions in years. I've gotten, I've just decided, you know, race is, uh, it's subjective. Well, I like how he said he's a human being. Yeah. That's actually kind of the one answer that he sort of gives. We continue here. That question. Good answer. And she likes it. She smiles. So she continues here with uh, this lengthy Um, survey. Now I'll ask about this particular building. How many units are in this building? I don't own it. (laughs) But is it three apartments or is it combined because I was over there? About three apartments? Like I said, I'm not answering any questions with that. I don't know. I don't own this. Okay. In what year did you move into this apartment? I'm not answering that question. Okay. Is there anything that I can answer for you? Because that is, uh, um, there's some explanatory. Let me show you the letter that you should have <laughs> I have, have a letter for you. Mm-hmm. Well, usually if, you know, you read a threatening government form to someone, they'll The U.S. Census Bureau is conducting the American Community Survey. A Census Bureau representative will contact you to help you complete the survey. The survey will ask you questions about your household's characteristics, including such topics as education, employment, and housing. Um, I would appreciate your help because the success of this survey depends on you. The American Community Survey produces critical 
up-to-date information that is used to meet the needs of communities across the United States. For example, results from the survey may be used to decide where new schools, hospitals, and fire stations are needed. Survey data are used by federal, state, local, and tribal governments. See, who could oppose fire stations? Who could oppose, you know, helping the community out here? Do you think Robert is being a stick in the mud? Should he... You know, help his community and just go ahead and answer these questions. Yeah, uh, that what they'll do is they'll try to lay that that particular one on you. They'll say, "Look, if you don't answer these questions, we don't get the money for the schools. Mm. You're hurting the children if you don't answer right. the questions. And the just answer people. the questions. Well, I mean, in that case, why not just say there's a hundred people living here? <laughs> we need more schools. Well, then you might be lying to a federal agent. I just I don't know what they mean. I, I know when if you lie to the FBI, they can charge you with a crime for that. I don't know if it's true for a, for a census. Worker. I don't think so, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to get my, myself caught in a situation like that. I, I, I'm not suggesting that people do it. I'm okay. not suggesting people talk to them. Right, and, uh, and actually, I'm surprised she just continues on, even though he's made it pretty clear he's not going to answer any questions. But you know, yeah, if she's they dedicated. Actually, if they actually do send this letter out in advance, then that's interesting because it would give people a heads up. Like, okay. The census is going to come within at some point within the next week or whatever the time frame is that they're expected. So that's a good heads up is to get your video camera, make sure the battery Batteries is charged up, make sure it's in a location that's, you know, relatively easily accessible when someone comes and knocks on your door. You won't know exactly which day and what time they're going to come, but you'll know that they are going to come. So I think that uh, that they're signaling this is good. It gives activists a chance to prepare themselves. The whole yes. process, if you'll pardon me, is no uh, it, it makes me think of a government that is just highly efficient, like a finely tuned machine in the 1940s that's going <laughs> out, you know, surveying people to find out where to put their their facilities and so forth. And, you know, most everything else we get, like our clothes and our food, doesn't require that that step. No, and you'd think that with the other government agencies that they have, that they could acquire similar information from elsewhere. I mean, would it be that hard for the – it probably would, I guess, because we are talking about the government here. But, I mean, how difficult would it be for the Postal Service, which is regularly lead, regularly delivering mail to various different names and various different households, to simply catalog the total number of different deliveries you know, as far as names that they're delivering to in any given zip code or whatever? Doesn't seem that difficult to me at all. No, it wouldn't seem to be that difficult. No, it's certainly true that the Postal Service will be – delivering to people that don't live in a certain home anymore maybe they've moved out or whatever but is it really going to be that much more inaccurate of a number than asking people how many people live at a certain place versus you know knocking on all these doors and all the money and the resources spent yeah well we get to hire so many people to do this work for us right and we print up money to pay them and then they spend that money and it grows the economy Ian. <laughs> let's continue decisions and to help programs that will provide health care education and transportation services that affect there you go i mean that's the the three big ones, that's what people want government for, right? Healthcare, transportation, education. education. Who could be opposed to this? I, I would contend, in fact, that government schools and education are uh, th- th- not related really much at all. Yeah, that's a good point. I think uh, Mark Twain was uh, famous for pointing that out. Community. The survey information also helps communities plan for emergency situations that might affect you and your neighbors. The Census Bureau chose your address, not you personally. As part of a randomly selected sample, you are required by U.S. law to respond mm. to the survey, Title 13, <laughs> United States Code, Sections 141. So she's now said it's both mandatory and that you are required by the law and then cites some code. And he's going to address that here in a moment. 83 and 221. We estimate the survey will take about, I usually chop it down to 12 minutes. I want to emphasize that any information you give our representative, that's me, will be kept confidential. By law, the, sur- the Census Bureau cannot publish or release to anyone any information that would identify you or your household. Again, that's Title 13, Section 9. Now, the government would never have one law say one thing and then change that law later on. They would never do anything like that. Would well, they? they? They can do whatever they want. If they lose your information, which they lose stuff all the time. Yeah. I mean, how? You know, I don't even trust the government to let us know if they've been hacked. If if the census data got hacked, um, yeah, they'd brush it under the rug if they could get away with it. Right. So going on. The information you provide can be used only for statistical purposes. Um, and if you've uh, access to the internet, hands that to him. Stuff. Hello. 
Okay. And she's going back so we'll to her lap. Well, I don't believe questions. the government should be involved with any of those services you just listed. Okay, the, the, uh, anonymity. You can have you can have it be anonymous, but this housing um, questions are important. Now, of course, she doesn't actually address what he says. Uh, he made a statement about how he doesn't believe that that should be uh, government areas, and she says, "Oh, well, you can be anonymous." So it's almost like some of the things he says, and he'll say more here in a little bit in uh, the, re the remainder of the video. It's like some of the things that he says just kind of hit a brick wall or they just go all the way over her head. And she, she's she got so much cognitive dissonance built up around her job and well, what she's doing. Well, people don't listen to what you say anyway. And yeah. It could also be said that he didn't address what she said. She told him what the law was. He says, I don't believe that, yeah. that, that government should be doing that. Well, that, that, that doesn't matter. It's the law. It well, I'm just saying, matter. I don't believe that the government has any legitimacy in regards to any of those services that you listed. Okay. <laughs> um, the next few questions... And, and by the way, when he's saying that to her, she's just tapping away on her keyboard. She's not actually looking at him or paying attention to what it is that he's telling her. It's about the number and kinds of rooms in your home. Rooms must be separated by built-in archways or walls that extend out at least six inches and go from floor right, go to Go grab ceiling. your ruler. <laughs> Whoa, those, those, those pillars with, the, with the, the column going across. It's not a column. The, uh, the support beam going across, that's only four inches. Not a room. Whoa, Rooms, they're eight inches. Balconies, it's a room. Players, halls are unfinished basements. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> That's a basic housing question. And this is when they... I don't believe you have legitimacy to ask me that question. It's under the code, U.S. What code. What happens if I violate that code? That's not my end. That's the U.S. Uh, Justice Department. That's not her end. She doesn't know what happens. He should have presented his wrists to her. She has some part to play when someone violates that code. She does, and she'll get into that, actually, here in the remainder of the video, which we will play more of it for you here in hour number three coming up, 855-450 free. It's the toll-free number. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, April 8th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,312, silver opened at $20.10, and Bitcoin is trading at $453.22. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course that you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medications that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. 
Order yours online now at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, on Monday, the Supreme Court decided against hearing a case that would rule on the constitutionality of the NSA's bulk data collection program. U.S. District Court Judge Richard Leon ruled that while the phone record collection could violate the Fourth Amendment and certainly does violate a reasonable expectation of privacy, the United States government must be allowed to appeal the decision to the United States Court of Appeals. A European court has ruled that the mass collection of telecommunications is a violation of the European Union's Charter of Rights. The decision from the European Court of Justice overturns a 2006 directive that allowed telecommunications companies to collect massive amounts of user data and then hold it for two years. Reuters reports that user identification information, the time and location, were all kept, but the actual content was not. A new bipartisan bill would force the United States government to release an annual report on deaths related to drone strikes. The Targeted Lethal Force Transparency Act would force the White House to release numbers on the total number of combatants killed or injured, the number of civilians killed or injured, and how the United States government defines combatants and civilians in the drone war. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, exploring, celebrating, and implementing ideas that enable people to find well-being, life meaning, and stronger connections to others. Tickets available for their second annual conference, taking place June 21st at voiceandexit.com. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, at coreymoreshow.com. And support is shown by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage, Inc. Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, April 8th, 2014, Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. 25 human rights issues are listed as concerns in a new United Nations report critical of the United States. Jailing the homeless, NSA spying, drone warfare, and the use of torture are all cited as areas the United States must address and reform. Al Jazeera reports the report was released late last week and says the U.S. must implement the recommendations of the Human Rights Committee without delay. A lawsuit is filed against the federal government by an Ohio newspaper for detaining two of its journalists. The Toledo Blade reports the pair was taking pictures of a tank plant owned by defense contractor General Dynamics. Standing in a public area to capture the photos, the two were accosted by military security and detained for nearly 90 minutes. They were then released without charge. The camera they were using was not returned until a United States senator stepped in, and even then the images had been deleted. Attorneys for the newspaper filed the lawsuit on Friday. As consumers around the world continue to question the safety of genetically modified crops, several states and cities have voted to label, study, or outright ban the technology. The Hawaiian Shaka movement has collected over 10,000 signatures in an attempt to put a GMO initiative to a vote this November in Maui. Maui County Councilwoman Ellie Cochran believes the biotechnology companies should be more transparent about their products. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585, or find them online, centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with Homemade Tortillas, online at cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, April 8th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Millions of Americans are irrationally feared dead following a train derailment near Wilmington, Delaware. Less than 200 people were aboard the train, but because no names have been released yet, countless more are being imagined trapped inside the wreckage by worried parents and overly anxious friends. And the list of imagined victims is growing by the minute. From brothers-in-law who live in Delaware, who usually drive but could possibly have been on that train, to friends who went to Delaware on a business trip and may have been next to the tracks for some reason when the train derailed. And sadly, we're getting reports that even those who have never been to Delaware are now also among those irrationally thought killed. 
Oh, and we are just now getting word from Homeland Security that they're now warning people their fears may spiral into a wholly new fear that their loved ones never existed at all and are just byproducts of a drug-induced lucid dream in which their consciousness is currently imprisoned. Such a shame since this is reality. There is nothing beyond this to believe otherwise. It would be folly. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live launching into the third hour of the program. You can take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We are playing for you audio from the Voluntarist Rebel channel on YouTube. Robert Mathias is a newer mover here to New Hampshire, came from Chicago. He's been really great about getting, uh, getting out there and getting active and recording what goes on. In this case, he didn't have to go out anywhere. Uh, the activism came to his door with in the form of a census taker. And, you know, she's a nice lady. She's just doing her job. She's just trying to get people to answer invasive questions about how many people live in the home, what their names are, where, uh, how many rooms there are in the house, how many units there are in the home, etc. Very, very invasive, personal, private questions. And he refuses to answer those questions. Uh, we'll continue with the conversation between the two because it's it's interesting some of the things he says and how she responds or rather doesn't respond yeah, more like that. to the things that he says to her. Uh, we'll share that with you coming up here and take your calls and thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Uh, let's go back here to uh, some of the video from the Voluntarist Rebel channel. We're about five minutes into this clip as she's continuing. Again, lady uh, standing in front of the, the doorway. She's got a laptop, kind of balancing the laptop in a, in, on one arm. And that can get kind of heavy. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you ever tried to do that. It's, it's not a comfortable thing to just kind of hold a laptop for 10 minutes straight like that. Uh, let's go on here, though, with uh, the audio. I don't believe you have legitimacy to ask me that question. It's under the code, U.S. What code. What happens if I violate that code? That's not my end. That's the U.S. Justice Department. I'm well, just what are a, they going to do gather. to me by not answering that question? Again, that's not my end because I'm... This well, I'm just, I'm just curious where this would go. Okay. So, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. So mm -hmm. what happens if I don't... You're a random person uh, at mm -hmm. this door. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, but what... She holds you know, out her badge to him at that point. Oh, I have a badge. I your questions. Like, how do you... Mm -hmm. Is there a threat of violence against me if I'm not answering your questions? Like, this what happens America. to me? This is America. You're right, it is America. Um, and the government uses now. violence. The look on her face, by the way, when he says, you know, is there going to be violence used against me? She just, she just kind of balks. I mean, just the, her eyes go wide and... Right. <gasps> What? It's not violence if we tell you to put your hands behind your back and you don't, and then they beat the teeth out of your mouth and then tase you a couple of times. That's not violence. Well, she would never threaten anyone, okay? So that's what she, I think that she was she was believing that he was intimating that she was threatening him. And, whoa, oh, well, no, I, I would never be involved. I mean, what she's saying in her, her head, I believe, is I would never be involved in something like that. And so, no, I mean, there's no violence involved here. And, and this, uh, that come back around here in a little bit. It's against me all the time, or at least the threat thereof. To my so. knowledge, uh, the, the way that the survey goes, the Census Bureau... Sorry about the plane there. ...mandated by U.S. Code to collect data on housing and population. So the... Why do they want this data? Well, um, again, they use that data. For instance, here's an example. Can I have, the, can I have, have all the information about your household? Kind of if, about if where I was you in live. A survey, absolutely. Can you give it to me right now? My name is Chris Barker. What's your address? My address. I live in Manchester. Okay, I what's live your address? Here. This is my community. I live over on the East End. Well, can you give me your address? Let me first answer this question about okay. here. Okay. So the statistics. See, this is what I did, any... Ian. Mm -hmm. This is like you know. I just want you to know how weird this is. She doesn't want to give him her address. Right. She's wise not to give him her address. He's a stranger. But her. for some reason, because his name randomly, his, his address randomly popped up in a computer someplace, well, now you're re required by law to give it to me. I've got a badge. Mm -hmm. Well, she's got his address because she walked up to his front door. She doesn't have his name, though. That's true. Manchester, just, uh, I think it was the last year or year and a half, we have a new uh, veterans housing. Uh, some of our vets are facing the homelessness and not having the housing that they need. So we have a new um, complex, apartment complex for our veterans, and that's federally funded, and that the By data, federally funded, you mean stolen from me and paid for them, yes. 
<laughs> she anyway, we, she we, always puts a bit a, a smile on her face whenever he suggests that violence might be involved in this a very kind of uncomfortable uh, looking <laughs> smile. Well, yeah, that's what she should be doing. Yeah. We. We the people, right? We oh, the yeah, people. we the people. Um, I don't know who this we person is, but yeah. he needs to stay the hell away from my money. Data <laughs> to make new schools in Derry. I believe they made a few years back a Barca Elementary School, and that was based on See? statistics gathered because of the... Who would, know, who, would know, who would oppose new schools, new government bureaucracies being built, more millions of dollars <laughs> being spent? That's This is a helpful survey. Flux of families. I, 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 well, my thing is, why does the government need to steal money from me and ask me invasive questions when if I, if I have kids and I want to take them to the school, why can't I actually pay for a service I need, let the market decide how many schools are? If there's a, a huge demand for schools, they'll build more schools. Like, to me, this just seems like a way to steal more money and to ask more questions. I'm just questions. asking how many rooms are in the building. I'm saying apartment. you have no legitimacy to ask me those questions. Okay. Okay. But you never <laughs> answered my question. Where, I, you know, I'm not where a, do you, well, you're asking me personal questions. I'm a questions. data collector. I don't understand that, but I'm just turning it right around on you. Yeah. How many people live in your house? Who are they? Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. their names? How, you know, mm -hmm. how many rooms are in your house? What is your address? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, well, do you want to give that to me? <laughs> like Bobby well, Dooley. again, yeah. I'm not... Well, no, I'm you trying to. I'm trying to prove a point. I'm trying. No, 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 no. I'm trying. I am trying this to. This is how I feel. I am my trying family. to prove yeah. a point. Well, I know. Just doing your job is not an excuse in my uh -huh. book. But you're asking me invasive questions about my personal life. Oh. Okay. Okay. And I'm saying is, well, if you're going to ask me those questions, okay, can I ask you those questions? <laughs> what is your home one? address? You know, how many people live in your house? Okay. How many rooms are there? How about this? Just basic housing questions. Do you have hot and cold running water? Do you have hot and cold running water? I'm not answering that question. I'm just, you know, just trying to, this is a, what can I say? Is that something that you'd like to, hot and cold running water? Because there's so many people, there's landlords who Why don't do you need take to know? care. Because there's landlords who don't take care of their buildings. And if you said, gee, I don't have hot and cold running water, then perhaps some other down the line buildings would be built where people can have <laughs> comfortable, safe. Places. All you have to do is answer this one question, and people will have better landlords in the future. Man, she's reaching. She really just wants him to answer some questions. Well, that's she doesn't want to come back. Yeah, I wonder if she will come back after this because they, they didn't come back to my house. Live? No, they only came once. No, two different people came, but uh, the same person did not come back. Anyway, going on. She's I'm like, not I'm not going back to, going back to his house. And um, I'm just a citizen like you. I live here. I, I want, want my community I don't want to be, be a citizen. Oh, you don't? No, I'd rather be an undocumented person. Okay. I, didn't, I never signed any contract to be a part of this collective. Okay. I'll okay. finish my, mm -hmm. my spiel. Okay. <laughs> does your apartment have a flush toilet? I'm not answering that question. Does, does your apartment have a bathtub or a shower? I'm not answering that question. Do you have a sink with a faucet? I'm not answering that question. Uh, do you have a stove? Is anybody in New Hampshire not answering that, answering question. that question? Do you have a refrigerator? I'm not answering that question. Now, the reason I'm going through uh, all of this, you know, the full interaction, is because I think people are curious, genuinely curious. You, you hear people call about this, because people have called over the years about, hey, this American Community Survey has come to my home, and what do I do, and what if I don't want to answer it? And how invasive is this really? This is the first I've actually seen this. I've never had been, you know, one of these people. Yeah, come I to thought my it was board. a very long um, questionnaire, as, as, as I recalled. So uh, let me continue here. At your apartment, do you or any member of your household own or use a desktop, laptop, netbook, or notebook computer? How many computers do you have in your home? Um, one. I have a laptop. Oh, okay. And, when, and where's, your home, where's your home again? Right over on the east oh, end. Oh, and what's the address? Near the Elliott Hospital. Well, what's the address? Off of Cherrytown Road. What's Central the address? Central Street. What's, you're, you know the address here. What's the address to your place? Again, I'm, I'm just trying well, I'm to do I'm my just job trying to figure out. I'm trying to prove my. Questions. I'm trying to prove my point. If you're not willing to give me that, why should I give you this information? I personally, 
I don't I recognize know. the fact that you're with uh, some group. Okay. I, it's not my, so let me, let I'm me not just... affiliated with you, so it doesn't okay. matter. So okay. you're a human being standing in front of me asking me these questions. What you do okay. with that information, I honestly don't all know. All I know and all I say is I'm proud to live in my community. All right, we're going to get to her uh, spiel here in a moment. 855, 450 free. So he apparently is not proud to live in his community by virtue of the fact that he's not answering her questions. But she is. We'll come back with more, and you can take control. Share your thoughts on the census. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Focusing on the census or the kind of mid-year census. The census is only supposed to happen every 10 years. The American Community Survey is ongoing. They're constantly picking people's houses, supposedly randomly, and going and asking invasive questions about who lives there and whether you have a flushing toilet, a refrigerator, how many rooms are in the house, who all, you know, what are the occupants, uh, races, etc. Yeah, they, they're really big on that race thing. So we'll continue here. We've actually got a full interaction between a census worker and a liberty activist here in New Hampshire, early mover for the Free State Project, Robert Mathias. A lot of people in the uh, Free State Project are big fans of Bitcoin and uh, and also liberty and ending the insane war on drugs. And if you are a fan of those things, then you should check out freeross.org. It's a site dedicated to helping Ross Ulbricht, who is currently in a prison awaiting trial on allegedly being the man behind the Silk Road, which is an underground uh, black market that existed for a couple of years before being taken out by the FBI. The FBI is accusing Mr. Ross Ulbricht of being the operator of that site, and he's, as I said, being held awaiting trial. It's going to be a very important case that will have to do with Bitcoin and freedom and uh, Tor, the anonymizing system on the internet, and whether or not Ross actually was the Dread Pirate Roberts, as he was called. That doesn't matter to me. I don't think that should be a, a question as to whether or not you should support this case. One thing that did, did matter to me is that when it uh, when they trotted these charges, when they when they arrested him, uh, they said that he was involved in a murder for hire, or more, more than one, intimated all kinds of confusing and contradictory stuff about murder for hire. And have since not actually indicted him on right. that charge. So what they've done is either they lied to me, mm. or... Um, they were sullying his reputation, is well, what they th- were doing. Th- that's, that's an assumption, or they're not protecting me. They've got a murderer in their mm. hands, and they're not bringing him to justice, and I, as a you know, a U.S. citizen, is the way they, they, they claim it, I, I mean, this is the kind of protection I supposed to expect from my government. Well, Ross Ulbricht uh, is a libertarian, and Dread Pirate Roberts is a libertarian, at least from his writings. That's yeah. that much. That much is similar about the two men, and or women. We don't know if Dread Pirate Roberts is a woman or not. But uh, th- that is what is similar about those personalities, and they, as libertarians, are uh, you know against the idea of using violence right. to That's achieve a, goals. It'd be a good reason for them to sully his name in that way. Exactly. So go to freeross.org if you want to support him. You can do it with Bitcoin. You can do it with PayPal. You can do it with a check. Freeross.org. As we continue here with the Voluntarist Rebel Channel on YouTube, U.S. Census worker meets a free stater. This lady is trying her best to get uh, Free State Project early mover Robert Mathias just to answer one question for her American community <laughs> survey that she says is mandatory and uh, that he's obligated by law to uh, to answer. So we continue here with the remainder of their interaction. Affiliated with you, so it doesn't okay. matter. So okay. you're a human being standing in front of me asking me these questions. What you do okay. with that information, I honestly don't all know. All I know and all I say is I'm proud to live in my community, my country. I want it to be better. It's not perfect. We don't live in a utopian society, but... I can walk up and down the street and do my job and speak to citizens. Yeah, but don't you see how much of an invasion of privacy this is? This is a huge invasion of privacy. I'm and if you running water. Asking me all these questions about what the fact here, that she and walked like, around and asked people whether they have hot and cold wanting water, that's the reason they do. I, I, I you know, you need to answer this question so that people can have hot and cold running water. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Citizens. Yeah, but don't you see how much of an invasion of privacy this is? This is a huge invasion of privacy. I'm and if you running water. asking Sorry, me all these questions about what is in here and like literally using the threat of violence against me if I don't oh, answer these questions, like what, no. what, what happens if I don't answer this? We said it's by and when she when he again brings up the, uh, the the suggestion that she might be using the threat of violence here, she literally kind of jumps back. At least she phys- doesn't physically jump back, but her head <gasps> jumps back, and she's. <gasps> I'm a good Democrat. I would never right. do that. Right. Well, we don't know what her political. No, uh, I can, I've, I've just listened is. to her for the last hour, Ian. Well, what, what would make you think a Democrat would say those things? Why wouldn't a Republican say the same thing? I'm exact proud things? of my community and people getting hot and cold running water because we've asked them dumb questions. It just doesn't. It just doesn't have that uh, archetypal sound. Okay. Well, anyway, she's definitely somebody who uh, who believes in her. Well, but and, and this is the other thing is that generally the Repu- Republicans don't run away from the violence of government. You're damn right. I'm from the government, oh, and you're damn you're right. Saying. You're going to answer my questions, or Maybe. yes, I will call the law, yeah. and yes, okay. they will hold you down and put a muzzle 
nozzle in your mouth until you're begging to tell me the answers to these questions. I, you know, maybe a Republican male. That seems certainly something that a Republican male would do. I don't know if you'd get the same response from a from a female. I, and you, anyway, indeed. she bristles. She bristles at the the, the she suggestion She clearly bristles. Here. <gasps> no, there's no violence involved in this. Law. So Again. what happens when I break a law? You know, there's no victim to this. What happens when I break this non-victimless crime? Okay. What will happen to me? I, I actually am really okay. asked, curious about what will happen to me by not answering these questions. Okay. Um, the way that this survey uh, works, it is a one-time mandatory survey. It is written into U.S. code. Citizens are asked throughout the country, not just here, but throughout 50 states, to pitch in. I, it normally takes question. about six minutes of time, and I'm sorry that I'm taking so much of, of your time, but no, it normally it takes about six no. months. We run through it, we run on. No, no, I'm um, happy to again. take your time, lady. This is other people you're not bothering. <laughs> Well, look, Mark. This is my community is service. I'm trying to make sure people get hot water by not by having it so that you don't answer their questions. Mark, everyone else is doing it. It's all. It's not just you. It's all over the country. We're doing this everywhere. Come on, jump on the bandwagon. Just chip in. Chip, pitch, pitch in. in. Yep. She says, "Do your fair share." Planning for schools, planning for housing, planning for uh, transportation. Again, all those and this runs are... right along with uh, voting. It, 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 there's a myth that by voting, where you're not doing anything, you're waiting in line for a little while, and 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 you know, casting a vote, that you can change the world, you can change things by voting, and just the same way, well, you can't, I don't think, in the same way, in the same way that you can't change your community for the better by answering questions. Well, you could argue that voting will actually have a chance of changing something. I mean, there was one vote in uh, where Mark lives where there was a, a fire truck that lost by one vote, or that succeeded by one vote. So had Mark been there to vote against, I know, I'm, out of time. I'm stubbornly yeah. not allowing that story to sway me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, census, that's not going to change anything. Be taken care of by the state. So that's the purpose of the, of the survey, for planning, for building, for schools, for transportation, uh -huh, for it. highways, for hospitals. Uh, when I'm done with my job, I close my laptop, I go to another place, or I'm done for the month, or whatever my workload is. Mm -hmm. Statistics are gathered. Plans are put into place. What's the uh, punishment, those, lady? Um, <laughs> citizens who she's getting uh, there refuse participation. Then it goes to the U.S. Justice Department. I am not in that area. I don't know. So my answer for you is I don't know. I thank you for okay. your time. Thank you. I appreciate Good luck your honesty. To you. Good. I'm she shakes his hand. Well, a my, citizen my, like you. I'm not Make, a citizen. Oh, I don't want to be. Oh, okay. Well, in any rate, I don't recognize community. being one. Okay. My point being is you're being paid with stolen money. Your taxpayer money is stolen from me. I don't consent to that money being stolen from me. Okay. And you're being, your responsibility on working for the government is to ask invasive questions. Like, you're asking Plus all these private... is invasive? Asking me who lives here, how, you know, what no, ethnicities. No, I said it could be anonymous. Asking, I put anonymous. I don't know you. Asking about how many rooms, know. like you know the address because you're here. Right. My Again, thing it's is, for housing. To okay, be but sure I, that I'm asking you those safe, same questions. I'm asking live. you those same questions, yeah. and you're not answering them because I'm a human. I'm just a regular person. You don't know me, but yeah. I don't know you. Yeah. So I, you see that you see the, the you, problem to this. I invite you to go to either call the. This is my card. This is who I am. If you could... I invite you to call the 800 number. And We're going to come back with the very remainder of this video, and then we'll bring Robert Mathias on for comment. It's Free Talk Live. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pillow, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an 
order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this podcast. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of the property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important, with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because. And avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. All right, it's Free Talk Live. Census Bureau going around doing the so-called American Community Survey, asking invasive questions about whether or not you have a flush toilet, how many people live in your home, what are the you know details on those people, etc. And their excuse is that oh, it's going to help your community. All you have to do is just give up all this information. The more information you give the government, the more they can help you. Because that worked with the Japanese Americans uh, back in the 19, uh, early 1940s, didn't it? That really helped those people. To get them, it wasn't it census information, by the way, yeah, that they used was. to go and round people up and put them into internment camps. Right. So if a Japanese American woman married a uh, you know Anglo man, had an Anglo last name, they weren't going to end up anywhere. However, <laughs> they did use Japanese surnames um, to find the people to go after. Now I don't know. I should take a look and see whether a, a man, Japanese man, who married a white woman, how that went. Surely there must have been one somewhere. Um, with as many people that were incarcerated, but they used census data to round these folks up. Now, uh, we're going to continue. There's just a little bit left in this video here from the Voluntarist Rebel channel on YouTube where Robert Mathias encounters a census worker at his front door and steadfastly refuses to answer her bevy of questions uh, despite her best persuasion attempts. 
we'll continue that, and then we'll bring Rob on to comment. So I had to head down for a Bitcoin event yesterday. I went down to New York City. That's about a four-hour drive on my way. Stopped off and got coffee from a local purveyor of, of coffee. Not a local, a, uh, a chain purveyor of coffee. And I generally make my coffee at home with BuzzBox Coffee. I've been doing that for several months. It's just a it's a better way. You save money. You get a better um, form of coffee. Now, it's not as cheap as store brand uh, coffees, but it tastes so much better. And this is what I've got to say about these coffees that you get in uh, the chain brands. They're awful. It's awful. This is swill you're drinking compared to BuzzBox coffee. BuzzBox is um, it's organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's shade grown and delicious. This coffee gets to you fresh and you can taste the difference. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Don't take my word for it. Get a free pound. Try it. They've got two types there you can choose from. And try out their, you know, the, these sort of their major types of coffee there. Now, if you're a decaf person, tell you what, take my word for it. It's great coffee. Get on the subscription plan. Order decaf. You'll have to take the caffeinated one for your free one. Give it to your friends who can drink uh, regular coffee, but... Trust me, it's great tasting. It's a subscription plan. Yes, you can cancel any time. But what happens is, is they we take the profits and we sink them back into uh, microloans for people around the world. Free Talk Live's trying to get together a thousand listeners to order their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, thus allowing us to finance 100 microloans through World Vision, helping people to live a better life. Give them a hand up rather than a handout. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, back to the video here, the audio track. I did post the link to it on our Facebook, Google+, Twitter. It is from the Voluntarist Rebel Channel. U.S. Census worker meets a Free State Project participant who is not answering her questions. She says uh, she's finished up most of her questioning here. It's just the remaining uh, minute of the video where she invites him to call with any other questions he might have. That is the headquarters. Since this is for you, okay. I invite you to look at census.gov. I invite you to find now, out more information. you do know, under the United States Constitution, I do all, have you, to go all you are supposed to be responsible to, to ask for is how many people live here. Every other question that you ask is not in the Constitution. It's unconstitutional. Again, the census is only supposed to be once every 10 years for how many people country. live in a location. I love my country, and I want to see improve, and I want people to have it. And I want to see improvement, too, but I don't think a monopoly of the use of force by the state is that oh, responsibility. I'm, I wasn't forceful. I'm, I'm not saying no, here. but you represent. No, you're just going to report right. this to the Department of Justice, and they'll do whatever they want. Right. <laughs> she doesn't know what that is. Not gonna hold, uh, Thank you. You're not doing the violence, but yeah. someone else will at some point. Thank you. And there you go. So we're going to bring uh, Robert Mathias here uh, on in a moment. But Dave is first in Nevada. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, what's on your mind tonight? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, what's on um, your mind, Dave? I wanted to talk about – well, actually, I'm going to ask you first real quick. I know one time you said that nobody else calls in the amp line. So is that like my line? Because I think you said – you said on a show once that you're like, oh, I don't think anybody else calls in. The TSA George, uh, or the, the artist formerly known as TSA George, uh, called in recently on the amp line. But otherwise, you've been the most prolific recent amp caller. Yeah, we uh, the, Dave the line, Nevada and TSA George were both the same person. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the amp line's kind of this hey. this relic um, of uh, the amp program. We do take calls here, but and it's it's fine for folks to call in. But we have yeah. sort of a, a newer system, and uh, you well, know, the uh, amplifiers don't know what the difference is between the systems, Mark. No, it's they don't. That, only, you know, we've only got 400 or so, probably around 400 active Free Talk Live amplifiers. Only about, they, they, they whoever they are in the business, say that only about 1% of, uh, of the listening audience will ever consider even calling in. Um, so, you know, take 400, then take 1% of that. That's and four. that, you know, and then not all four of those people are listening or want to call on one any given night. Right. That's ever call. Doing the dishes. What's going on there, Dave? I feel, I feel special. Um, what I wanted to talk about, and I'm sorry, I really didn't want to uh, change the subject with, with what you guys are doing because it's, it's been really good, but um, just the, the police here just getting out of control, which basically is everywhere in the country, mm -hmm. um, but they're like a level below Albuquerque. Um, there, there were two things just real quick this morning. Um, somebody, I guess, from what I understand, a roommate called the police because his roommate uh, was going to threaten to hurt himself mm -hmm. and had a gun, said, you know, I'm going to hurt myself. So... Of course, you know, the police come and say, oh, well, if you want to hurt yourself, don't, don't do it because we'll do it for you. Yeah. And the SWAT team, of course, killed him. Oh, man. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's crazy. So it's like, okay, well, you're calling the police. I mean, the roommate probably feels terrible. It was like, well, I was trying to thought he was going to help. help him. Yep. And, you know, and you're better off not calling them. And then there was another, um, there was a case, um, I don't know if you guys heard about it, maybe six months ago, about, uh, the, you know, sovereign citizens, which I don't even know that they call themselves that. I think it's more the FBI. But um, someone was charged with uh, conspiracy to kidnap a police officer, and then, you know, they were going to try him and kill him or something. So the guy was actually sentenced today, or he pled guilty. To, he got five years probation, and he's uh, also a sex offender, so he's a felon. So, you know, to me, the fact that they charged him with this, obviously if he got five years probation, it, it, they didn't have anything because there, there, there's no way. If you, you're going to threaten or um, conspiracy to kidnap and kill a cop, and you're going to tell him five years probation. So Yeah, I mean, they it, would take that pretty story, seriously. I think you're right about that. Yeah, and when the story came out, you know, it, it, I think it, it was it was semi-national where I heard on some other shows, you know, they were promoting, well, look, you know, the, these dangerous, you know, citizens, you know, are, are a danger to the police, and it kind of justifies, you know, they have an $8 million budget just for the Las Vegas Police Anti-Terrorism Unit along with the, you know, fusion center they have with the DHS and FBI. So, I mean, in a way, it kind of justifies that, but it's just, it, it, it's, it's just getting crazy. Yeah, what what do people really? What can they do about it? I mean, Albuquerque has been uh, constantly killing homeless people and other uh, innocent uh, participants, uh, people recently, and there have been some protests in the streets. Occupy's gotten out and gotten active, but you know, how's that going to change anything? And then you know, also what you guys talked about yesterday, and this fortunately is not the local um, county, uh, but the, you know, the, the man with, with the, the cattle and what the federal government's doing with him. I know he did meet with the sheriff, I guess, and the sheriff, you know, said, well, you know, this has nothing to do with us. Although, you know, the, the, the sheriff actually run an award for his cooperation with, you know, the, the DHS and FBI yeah. and stuff. So I'm sure he's, you know, uh, uh, helped them, but, um, you know, he says, well, it's nothing to do with me, but, but still, I mean, that, that story's, you know, crazy as well. Yeah, well, we talked uh, in detail about it last night. This is the rancher who's had uh, land for generations going back to the 1800s. The Bureau of Land Management is saying that he owes them money and that he's got to pay up and he needs to stop grazing on their land, uh, on public land that his, again, his cows have been grazing on for generations. And uh, they're now surrounding his property. They've got sniper teams out there. In fact, I got a phone number for, I believe, his one of his sons or nephews. So I, I didn't have a chance to call today, but I'm going to see if I can maybe set up an interview with one of the family or the, the farmer himself for Free Talk Live, so you can get them on to get their thoughts. Dave, thanks for your call and sharing uh, your opinion tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Free uh, free keen blogger Robert Mathias is on the line. We're going to bring him on, talk about his interactions with the census bureaucrat here in a moment. What uh, what did he you know like about what he did? What would he change in retrospect? And your thoughts are certainly welcome. Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and to truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. 
When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free Talk Live. Wait till you hear the least popular girl's name for 2004. We'll start with Rack. 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 <laughs> Crumpet. Crumpet. Well, Crumpet's kind of funny. Someone named their little girl Willie. Willie. Cannel- Cannelloni. Can- Cannelloni. Cannelloni. Lasagna. Mmm. <laughs> and Biff. <laughs> yeah, Biff. The These least popular names. name. <laughs> For the, the least popular name. These are all made up, folks. Do I don't not care. believe this nonsense. This is not news. I don't care. <laughs> I haven't laughed this much all week. Oh. This may be my favorite. Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how could you think that one up? I mean, if you were faking this list, I could understand that you could fake Donald Duck or Scrooge or or Pork. But how do you think of Rumpy Pumpy? Rumpy Pumpy. R U M P E P U M P E E. Rumpy Pumpy. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time maybe to sneak your call in with your thoughts about whatever you want to discuss. 855-450 free. Good chunk of the show has been spent on the American Community Survey, as it is called. This is a, a mid-term census. It's not the actual official census. Well, I mean, it's an official survey by the government. They say it's mandatory. They say it's the law that you have to uh, fill it out. However, the survey uh, taker in this particular video that we played the audio from throughout the show tonight, uh, she didn't seem to know what would happen if you didn't take the survey. She did claim it was mandatory and that it was the law, but she did not know. She knew that the Justice Department would handle it. She would go ahead and pass the information on, and then the Justice Department would take care of it. But she would never really say uh, or claim to know what would happen at that point. Look, I didn't gas the Jews. I just made sure the train door was securely locked. It's not her responsibility what happens. Uh, We're going to bring the uh, guy who created the video in question here on the line, Robert Mathias. He is one of the newer movers to New Hampshire, uh, moving at the very end of, I think, 2013. Robert, welcome to Free Talk Live. Hey guys, how's it going? FY, uh, Ian, I just want to correct you. It's Matthias. Now. Matthias. Oh, sorry about that. Thanks no for worries. the correction. Robert Matthias, welcome uh, to Free Talk Live. So d- give, give us a little background on this video. Did you get the letter that she said uh, that, that you were supposed to receive, kind of giving you a heads up that she would be coming by at some point? Well, we literally just moved into uh, this apartment, uh-huh. so I have no idea what she's talking about. But I wasn't about to tell her that. Got it. So this was a surprise to you then. You did not expect her to show up. You- no, we were we were just uh relaxing a Sunday after this is a Sunday. This was, you know, on a wow. weekend. Well they don't wanna they don't wanna come around during the weekdays, uh, during work hours. They you know, good people are at work from nine AM to five PM on Monday through Friday. 
Exactly. And we were just sitting around having coffee, and all of a sudden, a uh, census worker is at our back door. That was our back door uh, that went up. Like, we're on a third floor, so that's on our balcony. She walked up hmm. through like the balcony on our back door. It's not on the street level. That's bizarre. That's creepy. Yeah. Now, so like you when, know, normally a normal person would like you know close a door, or tell them to leave. No, I I grab my new camera and put it to use. So when uh, when she came up, was there anything, uh, any interaction between you and her that was not caught on video? How did she know there were two yes, people? Yeah, uh, originally uh, Joel um, answered the door first because we didn't know who was there at the door first. When he was talking, that's when I noticed that it was a census worker and went to go grab my camera and record the uh, interaction. There was like a, like 15 seconds of dead time that I didn't want to put on the YouTube video. I, I if you go to um, – there's a, a raw channel for uh, Manchester activism that I have, the full uncut uh, raw video on that channel. And what's the channel name? Uh, just Manchester Raw. Manchester Raw. So uh, so you did not answer a question about how many people lived in the home because in the very beginning of the video, she she seems to act as though she already has that number and it's number and it's two. Well, it's at least two uh, at this point. So she jumped well, to a conclusion, crazy, right? There was three of us in the actual apartment at the time, mm. but I, I, and she saw a three, but she went to two, which I thought was really bizarre because there were three of us actually in the uh, studio when she came to our door. Hmm. So even though in the video you point out that you know constitutionally the census is only supposed to ask how many people live in the home, you did not give her that information and she just jumped to that conclusion. No, I did not. Okay. Yeah. So she's um, also you know didn't seem to want to answer that question. She was at that point she's leaving. You know, sort of the at the, the end of it all. Yeah, she was leaving at the very – I had to get that in there, and uh, I also – you know, looking back, I kind of viewed that video as a whole uh, learning hospital because there's a bunch of stuff that I, w I wish I would asked and did differently. I actually wish I had brought up the NSA where, like, your job is uh, irrelevant because the NSA <laughs> knows all this information anyways. Yeah, right. Yeah, why don't you just ask the NSA? So um, what are the other things you thought you could have done differently, uh, you know, looking back on this? I wish there's a couple of times where I kind of raised my voice a little and I wish I kept my more calm mm. uh, yep. where I was interrupting her. I wish I let her say her piece and then just went on from there again. Uh, but at the same time, that wasn't a planned video. You know, that literally sure. was like, you know, five seconds from me grabbing my video well, and like, how many times have you had interactions? Like, how many times have you had interactions like this? Never. I, right. I've never even seen a census worker before. You did great. Well, I don't mean with census workers. I mean with government bureauc filming government bureaucrats generally sort of standing up. This is a huge adrenaline rush. I mean, I've done this. You, would you agree? Oh, I, I had a blast filming it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm just. Oh, I'm just saying. I don't know whether you uh, enjoy adrenaline rushes or not. But um, you know, this is. It's tough. It's like you're 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 shaking. You're you're on the edge. Um, it's difficult to know what to say and what not to say. What would have been a lot easier here? The the easy thing to do would have just been to answer this lady's questions and let her go on about her day. That's the easy thing to do, and that's why they send these folks around. I would like to second that, Mark. I criticized uh, you a little earlier, Robert. And I'm just glad that uh, a video that was made of me when I was drunk and arguing with a police officer who was coming to take my still, I got into a philosophical debate with him. And I'm, I'm cer I don't remember it very well. I'm certain he, he had the better end of it. And, um, and, and it was filmed, and I'm glad that it's not, that, that it never really got popular. Well, you're saying well, you appreciate I, I heard, this. I appreciate I the, the fact that nobody, that nobody has watched it and criticized me. I, I was. I was listening and I heard your criticism. The reason why I uh, I put the whole thing up because, like Ian was saying, I've never seen uh, right. like a full census uh, questionnaire. And the fact that she literally went through everything, I felt you know that I had to put the entire conversation up because that's she why I felt like questions. I had to play the entire conversation, even though it's probably not the most gripping radio. Uh, I thought it was an education. I, right, I thought it was an educational experience. People don't know what this is like, and they certainly don't know what it's like. Uh, even if they have experienced the census or this American Community Survey, they certainly don't know what it's like to refuse it. And you know, what does the census taker do in that instance? In this case, she just did her damnedest to try to persuade you with all kinds of points about that's schools, all she's going to do. Schools and uh, et cetera, et cetera, and the fire department, blah blah blah. And apparently, that didn't persuade you. Aren't aren't you a community minded person, Robert? Um, oh, I, don't you Matthias? love your country? I love how she like acted as if I wasn't proud to be in this community just because I'm not answering questions. 
One of the things that I or would, that you're bad if you're not proud of your community, particularly. I mean, what does your community mean? She didn't is, say he was bad, but she intimated it by oh, yeah. suggesting that she's a good citizen right. or whatever. It was absolutely that was the intimation. And what does community mean? Did you draw a line around here, lady, and call this the community? Because I'm not exactly sure. What if I only like half of my school district? That's what the Department of Housing and the census workers are there for to to determine for us what our community is. <laughs> exactly what they're there for. And why can't uh, people decide what they need for themselves, not people we've never met before? And this is what they do. You know, I, I mean, this is what high school pep rallies are about. We like this particular randomly drawn pattern that's going to change on a relatively uh, regular basis in our community better than the randomly drawn patterns that the other kids uh, end up going to other schools. I mean, it's amazing. This is how you pit people against each other. This is, you know, this is the government creating sides and teams. I also like how you didn't admit to being a citizen when she also sort of dropped that in there you need as to well. explain that one uh, if you'd say that you know i don't want to be a citizen you got to tell people what citizen means and i do like it too i do like to explain that and that was one thing that i felt was missing from the the video if somebody ever claims i'm a citizen i'd like them to prove it can you please provide evidence that i'm a citizen because in order to do that you'd have to show that the government has an obligation to protect because that's the other de- that's the part of the deal with citizenship is that you have a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection and the government's own courts and the supreme court has uh, has ruled again and again they have no obligation to protect so the person claiming you're a citizen can never make uh, can never actually prove that claim so let me ask you, Robert Mathias, uh, there, is there going to be a follow-up? She gave you a business card. She said you could call with questions. Do you think she's going to come back? Uh, do you think some other bureaucrat's going to, to come to your door and try to hit you up again? Or do you have any intention to follow up with further questions of their, uh, their department? I, I might do a follow-up asking more questions about the uh, survey. And honestly, I doubt I'll see another census worker at the door. She would probably chopped it off as like someone who's you know not... Do, I honestly doubt that the federal government will appear at the door again, but if they do, I'll have my camera ready. And that, I think, is the best thing you could have done in this situation. And, and I think anybody out there who wants to do activism, who considers themselves an activist, who would like to get involved, get a video camera, keep it around you. If you're on the road, you know, just make it your cell phone. Have a, a program like Bambuser, which is a great live streaming app for uh, for cell phone devices. It's free. Anybody can install it, whether you've got, you know, iPhone, Android, etc. So having an, an app on your phone is critical. And if you're at if you're at home, then you should be able to conveniently access a, a better cam, uh, you know, a camcorder, a more proper kind of video camera, which seems like what you did in this case. This is your new camera, right? Because I know you, you were using a cell phone with your previous videos. Yeah, I, I bought a new HD uh, Sony Handycam, and I actually take it wherever I go. I throw it in my coat pocket, take it to work dry, when I'm driving. Whenever That's I awesome. come home, Whenever I come home, I literally put it on our, on the desk just in case. I don't know, you know if I'll need it or use it. You never know what happens or I'm about to run out and do something. And you know, sometimes you have to go out to do activism or you just go to your door. Activism, you got to be prepared for. And you were Robert Mathias. Thank you for coming on Free Talk Live tonight. Your YouTube channel is The Voluntarist Rebel. So folks yes. can go there. And also uh, check out rebelloveshow.com. We're starting a new Manchester-based uh, activist show. When's the first episode of that? Tomorrow night. Oh, exciting. And when will it go online? It, it's actually going to broadcast live on our YouTube channel we have dedicated to that, which is youtube.com slash rebelloveshow. Cool. Thanks, man. Keep up the good work out there, and we'll talk to you later. It's been Free right. Talk Live. We'll see you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. In the meantime. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and welfare, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. 
By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Peace News Now is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Tuesday, April 8th, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama is taking new steps today designed to attack workplace discrimination on pay, starting for those who do business with the federal government. Vitals correspondent Mark Smith reports. The president's jabs at America's enduring pay gender gap were a big part of his State of the Union speech. It is time to do away with workplace policies that belong in a madman episode. Today he signs orders aiming to make it easier to fight discrimination by sex or race, both targeting federal contractors. One bars punishing of workers for discussing what they're paid, the other mandates companies give pay breakdowns by gender and race. It's another of Obama's Congress won't, so I will actions, and it comes as Democrats look to boost turnout from women and minorities in this year's midterm elections. Mark Smith at the White House. The Supreme Court has declined an early look at a case challenging government phone surveillance. Correspondent David Melendi explains. The nation's highest court is holding off on deciding whether the National Security Agency's bulk collection of Americans' telephone records violates the Constitution's ban on unreasonable searches. The Supreme Court justices have rejected conservative lawyer Larry Clayman's unusual request to bypass the traditional appeals process and hear the case immediately. Clayman says the case is too important to wait for the lower courts to reach a decision. He persuaded a U.S. district judge to grant an injunction against the NSA, but the judge put it on hold pending a government appeal. David Melendi, Washington. A Christian advocacy group says it expects the U.S. Supreme Court will have more chances to rule on the issue of gay rights versus religious freedom after the court rejected an appeal from an Albuquerque photography studio who did not want to photograph gay couples. Steve Coleman has the details. The justices left in place a state Supreme Court ruling that said Elaine Photography violated New Mexico's Human Rights Act by refusing to photograph a lesbian commitment ceremony. Alliance Defending Freedom Senior Counsel David Cortman says, Elaine and numerous others like her around the country have been more than willing to serve any and all customers. But what they are not willing to do is to promote any and all messages. The group is also defending a florist and a cake artist who refused to do work for same-sex ceremonies and a t-shirt printer who declined to make shirts promoting a gay pride festival. I'm Steve Coleman. The head of the Agency for International Development will likely face some tough questions today about the controversial secret Cuban Twitter program. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander explains why. The program to undermine the Cuban government was created by USAID and overseen by the State Department. USAID Administrator Rajiv Shah goes before a Senate subcommittee 